All right. Well, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to my channel. Um, give me, bear with me a moment here as I get things kind of set up so I can watch the chat. At the same time, you can see me. I'll share my screen so that uh, you guys can see everything on the map. Come on now, work with me, YouTube. Um, in the meantime, feel free to throw in questions in the chat. Uh, this is just going to be, I'm going to be showing off the spots that I really enjoy going camping. Um, and in the meantime, answering any questions you might have, whether it be about the location, if I know that location or camping questions in general, um, I don't really have a direction other than I'm going to start with showing off places I really enjoy going. Um, but with that said, I am trying to pull up the chat so that I can watch, keep an eye on that also. Da, da, da. There we go. Come on now. Video is going live. Live. And this is just epic slow. So I'll just talk while I load this up. Um, I like to disperse camp, uh, which means that I don't go to campgrounds. Uh, KOA and state parks are wonderful places, uh, but I bring my own water, my own power, and whatnot. Um, come on now, load up this Q&A here. There we go. Okay, so um, let me share my screen, and let's go over some places that I like to camp. Let's see your screen share. Um, application window. Google share. Okay, Google Maps. So I am located down here in Windsor, right about here. So I have a whole lot of area that's at my disposal, if you will. It's very easy for me to get to up in here in the National Forest. Uh, here's Clear Lake. Um, some of now earlier, Dylan, I see you're chimed in here. You were talking about Indian Valley Reservoir, which is right in here. Um, now, if I remember correctly, the spot that video was shot, you chimed in at was right in here. There's a boat ramp. There it is. I believe this is the boat ramp right here anyway as you can see this is very well used all the way in through here lots of people camp and yes you can disperse camp and all of this this is not the national forest this is blm bureau of land management um with that said in my opinion this is where i go when i want to go uh take somebody to be rowdy and rough house if i want to go and shoot guns ride dirt bikes uh take the trucks out and play in the mud i'm going to go camp in this huge area here i'll zoom out and this area in through here um bartlett springs road runs in through here through this little valley and heads back in you can so you can pick it up at walker ridge road at the 20. essentially it runs we'll say for hypothetically along this edge along through here through bartlett springs bartlett springs was a uh, bottling company it's been a couple of times but it's burned down both times uh in the turn of the century from the late 1800s, it was also a resort where people could stay uh, when they were at their horse cut, horse and buggy or whatever they were called. They could stay there. I think for an extra 25 cents, you could get a room with a floor. <laughs> anyway, the road comes back in and meets up in Nice right here. So in a sense, it just runs along in through here, over in here, and back down to the 20. So, Dylan, um, with that said, if you wanted to, you think I think you said you were in Vacaville, if I remember correctly. So you could hit this up fairly easily. Just pick up, you know, uh, the five, or I think this is what the 505 over to the 16. Yeah, the 16. Hit the 20. Go to Walker Ridge Road. Should be in here somewhere. Anyway, Walker Ridge Road. I can't spend forever doing this. I got a lot of places I want to show off. Walker Ridge Road, which will bring you up and along. I think it's this road here. Or you can continue along Highway 16 through Bear Valley. This is kind of cool. The road goes in a real square pattern. You might be able to see it here. Yeah, it goes along here, up over a lot of 90-degree turns, and then heads up into the mountains that way. Um, from what I understand, this area right here in spring, you get what are called super blooms. So if you can hit it during the right week, the wildflowers are supposed to be spectacular. I've done the drive twice, and both times I missed the bloom. Um, right now, a lot of this is burned, so it's not quite as pretty. There's a lot of fire breaks and whatnot. So you can come in through Bear Valley, Highway 16, or you can come in through Walker Ridge Road. Um, there is a campground 
uh, I think it's oh, something oak down in here. You can also stay down near the dam. Um, but a lot of people go in through here. I don't like going near people. I like to avoid them. So me, because of the direction I come from, it's faster for me to come in from the west side and come in from Nice. So my favorite place to go camping. Now, this is a real cool trick that not many people know about. A lot of people will camp in through here. I've been here, um, I think it was 420, and this was just packed with thousands of people all the way through this valley, all the way around the lake. And again, you can stay at any one of these places. I've seen people camp here, camp here, camp over here, camp over here. This is all available for dispersed camping. You can bring your dirt bikes. You're allowed to shoot guns. Just remember that you can't shoot from the road. Um, careful of your target and beyond, all that kind of stuff. Don't shoot over the water. Um, there's not a whole lot. I don't know that this is something I should necessarily share. Hello, Outdoors Maryland and Regan Brown. Just to acknowledge you guys, I'm doing my best to maintain the chat here. Uh, but sometimes I get really excited when I'm talking about camping. So forgive me if I uh, it takes me a minute to get to you. Um, this is not a highly patrolled area. So with that said, if you're looking for the security of having rangers around and maintaining the peace, this might not be your best place. Um, but if you're the type that likes to uh, have fun and stay up late, um, just be respectful of people around you and you're likely to not get caught. Um, fishing used to be really, really good in here, but then I think it was for about three years, uh, starting in about, I'm going to say about very clearly 2014, the reservoir basically dried up to where it was just this little portion right here. You we used to be able to drive in the reservoir with your vehicle, no problem, all the way down into this last like 15 or 20 percent. So only in the last couple of years has this filled back up. So whatever fish were remaining are going to be the hardiest of the hardy because the temperatures rose really high, which is not normal for those fish, uh, killing most of them off. So yes, I have seen people fishing. I hear there is fishing for catfish, uh, carp, and so on and so forth. I hear the carp right in through here. Uh, they like to spawn right in through here. There's a bridge right here. This time of year, there's a lot of fun in the mud right in this whole area right in here. If you want to go play in your truck in the mud, here's a great stretch to do it in. Okay, let me show you a really cool hidden campsite. Oh, before I move over, epic hill climb right here for your dirt bike and right here. But you better hold on tight and have some power. <laughs> So following Bartlett Springs Road around, I'll go kind of slow. There's a couple of cool spots to stay in here. If you got a big group, this is a good spot because it's easy for them to see, easy to get to. This road doesn't require um, any real like hardcore four-wheel drive. Uh, my Subaru makes it no problem and it's completely stock. I have highway terrain, tires, all that. Um, so you could say, yeah, you know, this is a great spot to come in. But if you do have four-wheel drive and you want a really secret spot, check this out. Okay, so right here. So there's two ways to get into this spot. And this spot's really easy to see with this turn right here. You'd be driving along, and this is well above all this, and you can look down from the road and see this big clearing. But do note that all of this in this screen is burned. Everything right now is black. So that was from the uh, complex fires in 2018. Check this out, though. So notice it's across a creek. So... If you have a Jeep or something with some ground clearance, you can come in through here and there's a cable right across here for USGS surveys with a little uh, cart that goes across it. That's how you'll know where you're at. You can camp in here, but the right end of these trees is a really, really steep rutted downhill. Now this time of year, it varies how full this creek is. Sometimes this creek can be 20 feet deep and 40 feet across. Um, late, late fall, uh late spring summer you can cross this no problem at all i made that crossing in november in my subaru without any issue at all i didn't make it here but i'll show you where so um, a lot of times when law enforcement comes in they come over here because this is closest to camp camp being here they see this uh, downhill and they go no way uh -uh, i'm not doing that um twice now we have seen the ranger just go back and forth back and forth and drive into this little spot in here and go how do what the how do we get in there well, once Department of Fish and Game, they hiked it and they came into camp. But all the other times, they just they drive away and they leave. So here, check this out, though. Uh, if you keep going past camp, where there it is, right here. Right here. This is fairly obvious. See these three little uh, roads right here? Here's a creek crossing right here. Now, when you're looking from the road and down, 
you can't see this section of road right here. And again, I've made this in my Subaru in the right time of year. So you can come in through here, cross the creek, come along the creek, keep driving through the creek, and then it's, let's see if I can see it in here. Well, here's one exit right here to get on this road. There's another one hidden in these trees. And my car won't make this one, but it will make this one. Well, I didn't, we've made it with trailers too. So you come in along here, you take this road and keep going back around. And now you've got this whole area where you can camp, disperse camping. You have creek access to go swimming in, which uh, I'm an, I consider myself a Nancy. I like warm water and I'm never there when it's that warm. I guess in July, this gets pretty hot. It's probably great. But you have, if you're into shooting, this hillside's perfect for shooting into because it's a fairly steep hill. Uh, there's a fun little hill climb to kind of warm up if you're doing uh, bringing quads or dirt bikes or side by sides. Great warm up loop right here, right in camp. You can fit a whole lot of people right in here. I think I've I passed through here on that 420 trip I was talking about. We went for the day. There was probably 80. Uh, what do they call those? Easy ups. This whole area was so colorful. It was crazy. How are these? Let's see. Uh, how are these areas this time of year manageable with kids and temperature wise? Um, this area, I would say is probably really good this time of year. Um, you won't get into this spot likely because the water's real deep, but you could go back over to any of this area right in through here, all of this stuff along the edge and the, the temperature will probably be really comfortable. Actually, it'll probably maybe hit the thirties at night, maybe, but you can have a fire. Um, just make sure it's got a ring and all that kind of stuff. This whole area is burned, so there's not much left to burn. And because the wind generally blows up this direction, so there's a lot of driftwood right in here. So you don't really have to go very far to harvest firewood. Um, you're allowed to harvest your own firewood out in these areas. I carry a chainsaw. I never bring my own firewood. Um, so with that said, you're allowed to harvest your own firewood, but it already has to be on the ground. Um, they highly recommend that you pull it out into a cleared area so that when you're cutting, if it happens to spark and catch a fire, you're in a clearing and it's not just going to catch the hillside on fire. And that's not really going to apply too much here because all this is just pretty much grass right now. Uh, I do have a video up, um, I think maybe even two of them on my channel that you can check out um, and share all the cool spots. Dude, uh, it depends on your opinion of uh, cool there, Charlie. Anyway, I'll do my best to keep some secrets hidden. Um, anyway, um, I lost my train of thought, Charlie. It's all good. Here we go. Um, great place to, to stay. There's a lot of fishing in through here. Granted, again, I haven't done any fishing myself here, so I don't know how successful it is after this has been filled back up, but it is pretty full right now. I did post a video, I think two weeks ago, maybe even a week ago. It was filmed back in November to show you how full this area is. So uh, this would be BLM land, uh, Bureau of Land Management, can, totally different than the Forest Service. They're, you're going to find BLM to be a lot more uh, like deserty, if you will, a lot more sparse, fewer trees, more shrubs. Um, so let's move along. Now for my area, again, I am, for those tuning in, I'm in Windsor. I'm right here. So I go up the 101. Now let's just go a little slower. So where is, let's see, Redding. So we're in some more. We're going to find Lake Pillsbury Covalo. We're going to go south. There it is, Lake Pillsbury. So you can pick up Lake Pillsbury from the M1 uh, in Upper Lake, which is Upper Lake. So you can take the M1 up in through, I think it's uh, Penny Pines or whatnot. Forgive me, I don't know for sure. The M1 comes in through here. There's the M6. Maybe it's the M6. I have to look that up. Anyway, you can access it from Upper Lake, Lake Pillsbury, or I come in through Highway 20, which is going to be, come on now, Ukiah. Mm -mm -mm -mm, Ukiah. So, Town Highway 20, here we go. Upper Lake. So, you can come in through here, or I go in through Potter Valley. So, in theory, if you wanted to, you could come in from, uh, Dylan, you were talking about Vacaville Fairfield area. Um, what's up, Daniel? Um, you could come in through the 20 and pick up the M. Well, let's, let's see if we can find it here. Uh, 
I should have looked this up before I got it because I always get the M1 and the M6 confused. Um, at any rate, so I take it up through Potter Valley, coming through this Trout Creek area, and it's a dirt road for me. Oh, M6 is through here, so it's the M1 that comes in from Upper Lake. M6, take it up into Potter Valley, and then into Lake Pillsbury. There is some campgrounds to be stayed at down in here. Uh, Oak Flat, I've stayed there twice. I won't ever stay there again. Um, this whole area on weekends can turn into a holy hell. Um, people will go out here and go shooting at all hours. They get drunk and they drive around. I've even heard of people having a stroke and slamming into trees. Uh, I won't ever stay down in here ever again. Um, it just is not safe for me. I don't feel safe down in there. I will come down into the valley during the day and go to the shooting range because it's a lot of fun and you can get some really long distance shots in through here. Um, I've like smashed the like button. Yes, please. Thank you. Hit the like button if you're following along. It makes me know that people are watching and liking this and uh, we can continue to do it because I've covered a lot of area and there's a lot of places we could go over. Um, so again, shooting range in through here. Um, do watch out that there's uh, the cops like to hide right here once in a while. This area is patrolled by the Forest Service. Um, there's If you come in through the M6 or you come in uh, through the M1 or any of the other areas, Right in here, there's almost always elk. Sometimes they might be over in here, but there's a huge, I, I guess it's called a herd of elk. I find them every time I come out there. They're right in through here. Maybe they'll be the, here. We'll just say they're in, oops, they're in this area right in here, and they're not hard to find. They're always there. So proceeding up, uh, the follow the signs from Potter Valley. If you're coming from the 101, follow the M1 to the M2. To, if you're coming up the M1, to follow them to uh, Lake Pillsbury. Uh, from there, you're going to hit this dirt road, the M6. There's going to be a sign at the base saying Whole Mountain this way or Covalo because, in fact, you can't take the M1, M6 all the way over to FH7. It's a really cool day trip. It's a long road, but it's really cool. You couldn't do it this time of year because it's going to be covered in snow. But in the summertime, if you want to do a long day trip, if you're in my area or you're willing to, if you're in Vacaville and want to go for a long day trip, fantastic. Uh, yes, Oak Flat is a <clears throat> show. Yes. Um, this is the show that because I don't, this is not for children. Um, anyway, so we're going to proceed along now. Something to note once you start to, where's the intersection? M1, M6, M6. Okay. Where the M1 and the M6 meet is a nice little curve right here. If you continue straight along the M6, this enters into the game refuge. This is a whole nother style of camping. Um, no, uh, your only street legal vehicles and absolutely no firearms are allowed down in there because it's the game refuge. Um, I think there's an exception where they're like completely disassembled or something, but just leave them at home. So if you want to disperse camp and not see anybody, uh, not hear any dirt bikes or any gunshots and you want to see a lot of wildlife. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right in through here. There's a game refuge. Um, I wish it would show the borders on here, but this is a fantastic area. Um, I do have a video up. I believe it's called Eel Creek. Um, and I could post more links if you guys want. I can show those too. Um, yep, I have that one marked down for the summertime. There's nothing mapped relatively close for the winter time, hence discovering your channel. Um, yeah, please follow through because I I, I try to do a dis, uh, not just camping, but outdoor stuff in general. Um, you know, places to camp, things to think about when camping. Uh, things to think about while you're camping, like ethics. Don't par don't camp too close to somebody when you're dispersed camping, because this is a huge area. There's no reason for you to camp right here and then somebody park right here. There's plenty of area. So anyway, um, this spot right in through here, uh, I was here December, and there was some snow along the road, and I did get blocked. I didn't. I was not able to make it to that campsite that Dylan you commented on on the eel river i wasn't able to make it there um as we get a little bit later that'll be one of the first places to defrost because it's a lot lower than them um so anyway game refuge fantastic place to go if you want privacy if you want to take the wife and get or the uh, the girlfriend and just get away from everybody um the spot i have about the eel river if you can, I believe that that one is marked with um, Google Maps. If you keep going on the M6 for roughly two miles, there's a huge culvert. I mean, this thing's massive. 
and that you drive across and you look down maybe 100 or 200 feet or something, a long way, and there's a huge swimming hole. I mean, big. Now, it's a very steep, sandy slope to get down there, but it's possible. I've done it in flip-flops, but it's not a whole lot of fun. But the swimming hole is really wide, really deep, and there's almost nobody ever there. Uh, when I shot the video of like my intro video, when you tune into my page for, for new subscribers and it talks about me and who I am, uh, I was there at that location. Well, right up the street from right up the road from there for four days, three days. I saw one car, <laughs> one car. So again, privacy, some really awesome swimming holes. Uh, I would say don't go past, uh, maybe August. Cause that's when it really starts. The water starts to get really low. You go this time of year, the water's going to be flowing pretty good. Um, you, you, I would, you wouldn't be able to swim in it because it's too fast. I wouldn't even let my dog swim in it because we should get swept away. Um, some of these roads inter, uh, swing back around and connect back into whole mountain and other areas. That's a rad. Yeah, it is a good spot. Uh, it depends again, Daniel, on the type of camping you're doing though. Um, if you're going to bring like me, I, I like to bring a gun, not because I'm scared of people or bears. I just like to, little, to do a little target practice once in a while. My son and I like to shoot. So I don't generally go in there, um, but it is easily accessible to a lot of people who don't have four-wheel drive and so on. So continuing up the, let's go back up this M6. Let's switch over to the M1 right here at this little intersection right here. It switches over from the M6 to the M1. Let's see if we can find some other spots. I have a couple of videos up on here. Um, but some of these spots are pretty well covered with canopy, so it might be a little tough. I've never looked for them on the map. Let's see if we can find them here. Oh, that's too high. Let's see here. I go. Where's my? Okay, that's too high. So we want to go back down. Along the M6, there's a, or the M1, there's a really killer spot that's pretty big. You could probably have 10 to 15 tents comfortably, uh, and it, it overlooks all of Lake Pillsbury. Um, I have a video up, which at some point, if people want, I could pull some of those up for reference. Um, gosh, where is that? I have not looked for this on Google Earth in forever. Okay, so... If you're, l l let me just give you some uh, ta talking points here. So you see the road starts to get really windy. You'll see it starts to get really steep and it starts to get really, really bumpy. If it starts to get steep and bumpy, you've gone too far. Backtrack and you'll find this uh, heading up. It's a left coming down. It's a right. And as soon as you make it, you'll go about 50 feet and just opens up. And there's very, very few trees, but enough to give you shade all day long. Two or three fire pits and it overlooks all of Lake Pillsbury. What's awesome about that is that during the early mornings when it's cool in the summer, the whole valley fills with fog. And you're above it. So it's really spectacular. So I have done all of this in my Subaru. Not an issue. Granted, not this time of year, but in the summertime, no problem. Uh, it's a little bumpy. You're not going to be doing any warp speeds, but you'll be going pretty fast or be able to go good pace. Whole mountain. Epic view. This last little stretch gets a little steep. Uh, I haven't made this in my any of my vehicles. I have a uh, 2014 Chevy Duramax 2500 four-wheel drive and then my 2016 Subaru. I have not tried it in the Subaru, but I might try that in the Subaru. I don't. I would not try this climb in my uh, diesel, though. I also don't want to scratch it. <laughs> okay, so if you're looking for some... Uh, so here's another point. Once you get to about here, pretty much everybody hangs out and they turn around and go back down the mountain. So if you want some more, another area to disperse camp that's going to be sparse and not a lot of people, anywhere past whole mountain, you can stay in here and disperse camp. Um, now, somewhere in here, I don't have, again, it doesn't show me the areas, but I know because from experience, some of this is wilderness, but it's on the right hand or left hand side of the road. So wilderness area. Epic place, but you can't bring in motorized vehicles. Uh, you are allowed to have guns, but you can't. You have to ha horseback or backpack basically to get in there. Um, it is well marked. There are signs that say wilderness area. So just know when you see wilderness area, that means that you can go in there, but you got to walk it, bike it, or horseback it. Now, I said left side of the road, and that made me think of something else. So the border of the game refuge I already mentioned 
is a lot of this M1 a lot of the way over to the right. There are signs posted along every quarter or half mile on the tree saying game refuge. Um, and you can go in there, just no firearms. So note that anything on this side, no guns. Once you get up into up and past the top of whole mountain, you get into a wilderness area. You got to hike it, bike it. Now bicycle, not motor, not motorcycle uh, or horseback. So I had mentioned doing a day trip. Let's see if we can keep this on the map the whole way. Probably not. Sort of. Okay. So whole mountain right here, Lake Pillsbury. If you wanted to, this is a real easy day trip. I've done it from my house in Windsor. Come up along, go along the M6, hit the M1 up to Whole Mountain, keep going, go away, keep going along the M1, and you can pick it back up on 162, somewhere in here. There it is, right here. Pick it back up on, well, actually, it's FH7 right here. So FH7, this gets kind of complicated, uh, but not terribly. Let me break this down for you. FH Forest Highway. M, M1, M6, M10, all those, mountain highway. Um, FH7 is actually highway 162 until it hits the forest line. Um, it's well marked. It does, you know, say now you're entering FH7. Um, highway 162 to Covalo. That's how I get into the Mendocino National Forest up into this area. And this is my favorite area up in here. Um, Charlie, forgive me. I'm going to do my best not to bulge everything, but here we go. Um Dense, yeah, uh, I'm going to get to that, Dylan. Give me just a moment. Uh, I marked the location down for the BLM land, but it looked, like you said, a bit more open the white flags of woods. Yeah, uh, if you want a romantic getaway, don't go to Indian Valley. That's where I go with the guys to go roughhouse, go ride the bikes, and shoot the guns. That's pretty much the only reason I go there. Um, there is no other reason to go there. Uh, we don't go there for the looks. We go there for what we can do there, which is to shoot guns and ride bikes and spin donuts in the mud. But with that said, Dylan, I'm about to show you some spots that absolutely are amazing. Um, so let's see here. FH7, follow that around. Now, when you hit this, there's a little general store. Well, it used to be. I think it's now a bar. Right where the M1. Yeah, okay. So there's a bunch of like houses and an RV park right in here. So we're going to go up into this area of the M1 next, Indian Dick area. So Forest Highway FH7 right here. This is where the M1 meets, and it's going to turn into dirt somewhere over into here. So when you do that day trip like I was talking about, I'll come in through here. I'll make this left, take FH7 back to 162, go through Covalo, hit the 101 at uh, Willits, and head south. Uh, it's not quite a full day. It's not 12 hours, but it's a good pace, especially if you're going to stop, have lunch. Um, if you're bringing the, the family and kids and they're going to want to uh, – you know, take in the sights or fly the drone or take pictures. It might be an eight or 10 hour day for me in, in Windsor. Um, you'll have to map it yourself, but it's definitely a loop that's really cool. Now, if you wanted to, you can also take FH7 all the way over to the five. Um, couldn't this time of year because it gets pretty high. But so if you're coming from the other side, um, from the other side of the valley or the mountain, uh, this could be a different kind of day trip you could do. Um, so here we go. FH7. Um, the first 12 or 13 miles is private land. You can't hunt, shoot, camp, anything there. Um, right at the border though, if you check my videos, watch for one called big dove. I called it that because when I discovered it and pulled in, there was a huge flock of bantel pigeons. I mean, 50, 60, 70 of these things are everywhere. Um, big dove is a fantastic spot that I won't be able to find on here. One of the reasons I like it is because it's really flat. It's got two fire pits that are really far apart, 60 yards. Um, somebody has set up a, uh, a big plywood bench and cut out an opening with a toilet seat on it. So when we stayed there last time, there was actually this black construction netting that was 10 feet tall and covered all the way around. Well, not all the way around, but formed a basically an L shape so nobody could see you from camp. Um, used it as our bathroom, and then we were done. At the, before we left, we flipped it up, dug a big hole next to it, and moved our you know waste into there and buried it, which is fine. Um, you need to bury your waste at least a minimum of six inches, according to the Mendocino National Forest website. All the stuff is readily available to find on there. Um, 
at least six inches or deeper. Deeper is better because the animals will smell it. They'll dig it up. Um, you're not supposed to technically de bury your toilet paper and feminine products because the animals will dig that up. When they dig that up, they can get sick, but also the flies will land on it and then come fly back into your camp and touch your food. And ugh, yuck. Um, the other thing I like about Big Dub is someone had set up a uh, like a wood slab across a couple of trees to form kind of a bench a table, if you will. Mm, two thumbs up. Um, there were the fire rings that were there. Someone really cherry picked some beautiful stones for the further, the further in stone. Let's see, as you're entering camp, more to the right, further in, the stones are beautiful. Someone had also taken the time to carve two log benches. Mm, yes, epic. You could kick back. They had a little stool, throw your feet up, have a little fire going. Um, there's a little tiny pond. You can see in the video, a little tiny pond, no fishing. The thing's probably 25 feet across, definitely seasonal. It's in the summertime, it's going to go away. Um, but beautiful spot, very lush, uh, up in this area, you'll, it's going to take longer to, for the snow to melt. I think they say, um, June, uh, no, May, June. Yeah. April or May, the snow starts to melt off and you can start accessing these areas. Um, and that pond is really pretty. Uh, once you go past the pond, you can peek through the trees and see all the way through this epic valley that just goes for days. And there's a whole nother ridge line. Amazing views. Set up a couple of chairs, get some wines some crackers and some cheese. Oh, yeah, you're getting some for sure that night. OK, so let's head on in to. So another place I've already done two or three videos, Pleskett Meadows. This is stocked right before deer season by the Forest Service and fish and wildlife. Uh, I happened to be there two weeks before uh, deer season and cleaned up. We caught delicious trout that tasted nothing like pond. They were fresh and clean. Uh, I limited out in an hour and a half. Five beautiful rainbow trout. Amazing. This lower pond, I've heard rumor that there's bass down in here and some trout. I have yet to fish it myself. This water is a lot more murky and brown in the burn areas along the M10 coming into Upper Lake on the M1. Yeah, I've been through a lot of that burn area. Uh, it's not pretty, and a lot of it's not really open yet for public use, like riding and camping. Um, this hasn't been burned right here at all whatsoever. Um, I do have several videos of the burn up, and it's, it's not pretty. Um, but again, this area I'm showing you right here has not been burned. It's still pristine. The forest is epic. If your wife wants something that's got a lot of cover, the temperature is very mild. I've been here at home and I left for this area and it was like 93 degrees. I got up there in the middle of the day and it was, I think, 62, maybe 65. It was just perfect. Also, this whole, zoom out, this whole region all in through here stays green so much later in the year. I mean, we're talking about lush green plants. That, of course, I don't know the names, but some of them are two or three feet tall. Um, if you look at my Smith Camp video, you'll see some of that area that I do a flyover over on this spot I'm about to show you. Um, that'll show you the greenery I'm talking about. Absolutely epic camping in through here. Again, you can access this whole area from the five, which is over here. So you come in through 162 and hit FH7 and come in that way. Uh, again, I don't know where you guys are watching from, so it's hard for me to um, to give you reference on the best way to get in there. Um, this area is unreachable at this time of year. It is covered in snow. Uh, again, it's going to be May. They say it's open, but every year is different. I haven't been up here since uh, I think it was October I shot the last video, uh, the dispersed camping video, and there was little bits of snow on the ground. Um, I didn't go up there in November. I don't know this area all that well. Um, I do have ways and means of finding out when it opens. So you guys can send me messages and I'll do my best. Like, hey, have you heard it's open yet? And I'll do my best to reply. I have some resources. I know some people at the Forest Service. I can ask them, is it open yet? Um, this, uh, so we'll say spring, summer, fall, epic. Absolutely epic camping. Uh, where is Pleskett Meadows? So Pleskett Meadows is a campground. They do have uh, vault toilets that are really clean. Um, there's plenty of campsites. I was a, I tow a uh, six by 10 box trailer. I was able to get it all the way in and out. I was able to back it into a parking space and stay there, no issues at all. Um, I think last year, if our memory serves me correctly, this area, you were allowed to have fires year round. 
Um, you had to have a fire permit, which are uh, available via the website or uh, forest service prevention officers are the guys in the green trucks that have like fire hoses. They look like firemen. Um, they'll give you a fire permit free of charge. Um, you just got to read the document in the back and sign your name. You won't be retarded and all this and that. Um, I do believe there's running water here during the, uh, well, we'll get that later, during the summer. Uh, but they shut it down in the wintertime. This in the springtime is an amazing view. You sit back right here with a fishing pole. Uh, epic. Just beautiful. There's a little, um, not a dock, but um, what do they call that? You a pier. Right in here, there's a pier. So there's also, if you come in through here, there's parking right here and another vault toilet right here. You can park right here and walk in and fish. And the video of me says, uh, the video of uh, fishing Plesket Meadows, catch your limit. I'm, I'm fishing right here. Uh, there's another little entrance right here. Um, and I think there's one more right here. You hit these three spots and you follow what I did on that video. And all three times I went there with those little mouse tails, that power bait, I limited out in an hour and a half. I came back with fresh trout. Um, and I'll show you where I got the spring water. Well, I'm going to show you the rough area where I got the spring water also. So same day, I brought back to camp fresh mountain trout and fresh spring water right out of the ground. Uh, now, how stoked is your wife or girlfriend going to be about that, that you brought in all this stuff and you can get firewood from right there. So in a sense, you can harvest most everything from right in this area that I'm showing you now. Easiest route for me to Mendo is to take the east side of the M4 inside. So this is my first visit to the forest. I'm looking for not to venture far deep into a way. I know where I'm. The stick to the M roads. Uh, as long as you stick to the M, like Mike, there it's not that hard. They're all going to be very well maintained. It's the N roads, like 22N11, where I show you how to get down to uh, Keller Lake, uh, Black Butte. And those, those start to get a little more complicated. Um, but if you stick to F8, uh, the forest highways and the mountain highways, you'll, for the most part, be okay. Um, if you want to go, so let's stroll back. I'll work with you here. Stick, in, stick with this uh, uh, um, Lake Pillsbury area. Um, that would be one that I'd recommend. Again, I don't know how easy it is for you to get to. It's going to give you the, excuse me, it's going to give you the deep forest look that you're looking for. Uh, accessibility is awesome because it climbs up the hill. Uh, and last time I was there, uh, actually my buddy was there a few weeks ago. He made it almost all the way to the top, uh, with four wheel drive. And he it's nothing. It's just a, I think a 2014 or 16 Tacoma, no lockers or anything. Uh, no mud terrain, mud, snow terrain tires. He made it almost to the top. Me, I made it only to about here. Um, so you can come all the way up and that would be a very good test of, uh, not having a complete, not having the complicated directions and hard to find and my, my way back uh, and then having to put it in four wheel drive and getting stuck. Try this M1 uh, and you'll have great success. Um, the easiest one is for you is going to be Indian Valley, but it ain't pretty, especially after it burned. I do have a video up uh, where we're shooting uh, the year before it burned. Um, I don't know what it's called though. I'd have to look it up. Um, I would, Dylan, I would, I would try whole mountain here. So if you look up directions to whole mountain M1, that would be my suggestion. If you want things kind of easy for your first route. And if you wanted to go in through the M6 and if you're not bringing firearms, check out the M6. Um, but again, I only found the uh, one spot that was really, really nice to camp at that wasn't snowed in that I felt like I was not going to where I, the last time I was there, when I hit snow, it was around a turn with a culvert down on both sides. I didn't want to go around the turn and slide off because I was with my son and I didn't want that. So M6, there was a couple of spots. You're allowed to disperse camp in the refuge. You just can't have firearms or dirt bikes. Um, you are allowed to ride dirt bikes up until the whole mountain. Actually, it's somewhere past whole mountain. I forget the name of the road, but it is posted on the website. Um, you can also pick up at the ranger stations these little maps here that are paper maps for OHV use. Um, it'll show you all the trails. These fold out like a regular map, uh, like on a newspaper. Not sure how well this is going to show up, but these are free. Uh, and then also, I think these are a couple of bucks, but you can get these too. These are pretty handy. They fold out. These are water resistant. They're that tougher paper. Um, so you can get these for like, if you wanted to check out some of the end roads and get around, 
Uh, if you want an even better map, the one that I carry religiously, I carry this one. This one was 15 bucks. Covers all the N roads, all the M roads, the FH7, whole area. It's all right here. Never runs out of batteries. Um, the other reason I carry this is because if I run into a park ranger or a for forest service prevention officer, he, uh, so what's cool around here? Um, any recommendations? I've got a bunch of circles in here. I don't want to unfold it because it's huge. They circle stuff on my map, like the, my video of Keller Lake. If you look at this map, it's just a dot on the map. You'd never find it. But somebody went, hey, check out Color Lake, and they circled it. I found out, okay, it's actually not that hard to get to, FH7 to 22 and 11. Uh, and then from there, you just kind of go along. The hardest part was finding the turn to get into Color Lake, uh, but I have the advantage that I have these fancy little things that fly with cameras on them. So I knew I was close. I threw the drone up in the air, and we managed to find it. Turned out we were less than 100 yards from the turnoff. Um, Keller Lake, uh, I would I would recommend early in the season uh, because the algae growth is not too abundant. Uh, absolutely stunning. The colors are whoops, the, the colors are stunning. Um, I had never seen such a variety of colors. Uh, I lost my chat here. Um, I'd never seen such a variety of colors in one little pond in my entire life. It was awesome. And you can see some of it from the video. Um, I went later in the season. There was more plant growth. Uh, the water level is a little lower. It wasn't quite as pretty. Uh, but if you go there early, mm, yeah. Um, so Keller Lake, you can check out that video also. 22 and 11 off of FH7. Um, and I we could do that in our Subaru. Again, you don't need anything major or fancy to get in there. Um, so I'm just going to keep going with spots that I like, uh, and feel free to chime in and I'll do my best. Um, but yeah, there's, I'm still waiting to go further on the M6 and hit some of that area past the game refuge. Cause the M6 goes all the way through the game refuge. Um, I think it's about two miles past the Eel river spot that I did the video at the game refuge ends. There's uh, trout Creek meets the Eel river. The Trout Creek is basically the border of the game refuge. West is game refuge. East is not. Um, so you can technically shoot in there. Uh, we were there. I think it was August. Swimming. Mm. Even for somebody like me who's a water Nancy, loved it. I have a video of, you see a video with uh, me swimming with a little newt as the thumbnail. Um, that's in that area. I was in the water a whole lot. Loved it. Um, and again, right up the road, there's a great swimming hole. So let me find my way back to 162 plus get meadows is down in here. Because I want to show you, there it is. Okay, so Dylan, you were asking about where I filmed dispersed camping. So hypothetically, you start at Plesket Meadows. Follow this back, FH7. I tried to get this to send a link, but because it's not on an actual road, it didn't want to. So here we go. Okay. So right along here, if you're headed east or heading from the east to the west, right here, there's a little tiny sign, like a street sign that says 307 right here. So I don't doubt it shows up on here. Anyway, there's a little sign right in here, but you can't see it coming in from my direction. But this turn is fairly distinct. Once you've made it once, you'll remember it. There's a rut right here that's fairly deep, but someone's filled it in with rocks. I, again, I've made it in both my truck with trailer and the Subaru, no problem. So follow this in. Keep going. Keep going. Okay, here's where things get interesting. So when you watch my Smith Camp video that I have the aerial tour, I was camped right here. And I flew... Uh, basically my flight path was along here, down over and through here and back up again. So this is what you're seeing in that video is right here. Um, things I liked about this spot right here is these trees make an epic windbreak. Also a great wind or a uh, sound barrier for people driving along the road. You don't hear them. The, I think the apex of the hill is right about here. This is a great spot. Also, if you keep going down in here, I can't make this in the trailer. It's way too tight a turn, and it's only a 10-foot trailer. This is epic. Now, for someone like me who loves to um, – how do I say this? Just loves to learn about the plants and the ecology and, like, survival methods, if you will. 
all of these trees you're seeing right here, these are elderberries. Now, unfortunately, I'm moving to North Carolina this July, so I won't be able to harvest them. But you can get a harvest permit from the Mendocino National Forest. There's enough in here for probably 50 or 60 families to make elderberry syrup concentrate. If you look that stuff up online to get the pure concentrate, it is unreal expensive. But right in here, you could probably do this little section right here and have a year's supply for just your family. This little spot right here, very private, very flat. It's not really my style because it's kind of dirt and this hill all the way uh, you know, above it, below it, and alongside it. I don't really like staying on this dirt, but you could. So, Dylan, let me show you right where I filmed that footage. So, there's a spot right here you can park if you need to unload your bikes. You are allowed to ride your uh, ATV side by sides, uh, OHV vehicles. You can ride on these end roads. Um, you can park right here. So, where I filmed it, we come down this road right here. This turns a little little weird with the trailer, but I made it. No problem. Here you go. I filmed it standing right here. Um, does it bring up coordinates? Um, I'm not sure if it will give me that. Let's see if it will do that. Ooh, it did for a second. Oh, at the bottom of the screen. There it is. Move the camera and see what it is. Uh, so there you go. There's the coordinates to the exact spot I filmed that video of dispersed camping right there. This spot is really, really cool. Um, this is all a very you, – from camp, you can see all of this very steady uphill. And during uh, the late spring, early summer, this is so lush. Um, I have a video uh, from the game camera that I posted the game camera right about here. Uh, and a little buck came in and danced in front of the camera. A doe came through with its fawn. Awesome. I put up my chair one morning right about here, sat there in the plants, sipping my coffee, and a whole bunch of deer, I think it was about 10, just came walking on through. And I happened to have my DSLR, and they didn't care that I was going click, 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 click with the DSLR. They didn't care at all. And they just slowly meandered across here great place so the downside this is let's keep going with the positive stuff this is really good because you get a lot of cover it's a really fairly big area you could probably have i don't know four or five families and be comfortable with plenty of room right in through here um downside this is a wind tunnel <laughs> the wind comes up over this and because this is a clearing instead of going up over the tree the wind going up over the trees it comes right down through here and just keeps going so you'll get these, now they're not like, you know, a hurricane force winds, but a couple of times during the day, it's going to blow your napkins off the table. Uh, you'll have these nice breezes. And again, uh, even on the hottest days back in my area, when it's in the nineties, this might hit the seventies. So it's really great. And you're in the shade most of the day because of the canopy. Um, but it's a little breezy. So I kind of liked this area a little better. It was pretty private. I didn't find anybody was coming in through this road in through here. Um, and this is, off of here 22 n 20 um n roads that's where you do start to get a little more complicated and a little a lot less maintained but again uh some of the better camping can be found in there because fewer people travel it i've seen a prius make it on the fh7 all the way into uh pleskett meadows now the spring water i'm not gonna be able to find that on this map but from this camp, you basically follow this road that goes through these trees and keep going. And then somewhere, I believe I have the coordinates up. Somewhere, if you keep going, you, as you drive along, uh, you'll hit a sort of a straightaway. And you'll look up in the trees about 12 feet. There's a blue sign that's about 2 by 10 inches that says water that way. And there's a turn that goes up in there. And you look up in there, and you're like, that's not very much. It doesn't go very far. Pull up in there and park. You'll find a black tube that comes down the hill. Out from that black tube is fresh drinking water. I've been there five times with multiple people, and no one has ever gotten sick. The water is delicious. Now, if you walk and follow that tube up the hill, it goes into a drop box that someone's made and dug into the ground to collect the water and send it down the tube. But if you go uphill about five more feet from that drop box, you can see where the water wells up at the base of a tree. In my video, you see me squatting down and drinking. That's that spot. And I'm literally drinking it where it's coming up out of the ground. 
not down the hill, up out of the ground. You go one more foot up from where I'm standing, there's no water. It's dry. It's just pine needles, pine cones, tree, nothing there. So from here, where are we at? Here, you can spend 20 minutes driving down to Plaskett Meadows, go fishing for an hour or two, come back, drop off your trout, follow this exact same road, no turns, down to the spring water, go get your spring water. Uh, that one, my Subaru has made it in. My diesel truck has made it in. Uh, I would not take a Prius in there. would not take a Camry, but a stock Jeep, Tacoma. Uh, again, I have a stock 2500 diesel that doesn't have that much ground clearance, and I have highway terrain tires. I made it in there, no issues. I this Now when I go back to that spot, every time I do, I bring every single water container I have, and I bring it back home with me because it's just that good. Um the water when you drink it at home, you get that chlorine taste. All the other, all the other, just funk from the plastic pipes and all the other stuff the city puts in there. There is none of that in this area. All you get is that organic taste. All the minerals. It's just delicious. Um, my phone is going off, so please bear with me. I deeply apologize, but I need to make sure it's not the wife. Uh, school has a room. Kids know that you want to make dinner. Yes, we ate. Okay, good to go. Okay, so uh, this is, if you look right here on this tree, there's a sign about 20 feet up. It says Simpson Camp. Uh, how long is it from camp? I didn't get, how long is it from camp to get, okay, so from camp to get the water, about 10 minutes, maybe. It's not that far. And you can't, there's no turns. You just follow this down. There are no turns. Um, again, the sign is sort of hidden but if you're driving slow and paying attention it's about 12 feet in the air and it's about two feet across it's blue and says water and the turn is to the left there is an arrow um and i believe i have the coordinates up on there um let me see if my gps has batteries in it because i believe it has the location and even if i don't have it it doesn't but i might have some i could tell you the gps coordinates from my garment this is where i start losing watchers no, you guys are loyal, right? You're going to bear with me. Oh, and of course, I only have triple A's. Uh, what else double A's? So, think of some questions here, guys. Entertain me while I find some batteries. Or try to. No. Nope. Um, is this one for batteries? Nope, sealed. Okay, SOL on that one. I'll find some batteries. I'll get you the... Uh, find me on Facebook. I'll send you the coordinates from my Garmin. Um, but again, about 10 minutes, no turns. Um, water is on the left-hand side. It's a very short driveway. You can make it in there, no problem. Uh, from here to get to Plescott Meadows to go fishing, about 20 minutes. Uh, sweet. This is all information. I'm from the Midwest. Moved out from Texas. Okay. Um, changing seasons is very different. Yeah, it is. But that kind of adds to the beauty out here because this – this season takes longer for the snow to melt. The The greenery lasts longer into the year. And when you have that much greenery, it's going to be letting off cooler air and keeping this temperature a lot more, uh, a lot cooler and a lot more temperate. It's going to be amazing, even in the summertime. This is perfect. I was here, I think, uh, September. I was here with a friend of mine, and this was, like you can see here, kind of brown. It wasn't as nice, but it was still really pretty. But I came here in like July and August. This was still super lush. There was still wa there was water flowing across the road right in through here. There were some puddles in here. Um, it's just beautiful. Um, the one thing I before I forget I would mention deer season. I don't go in here the first two weeks. This place is packed, 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 packed. Um, give it a little bit of time. Things will mellow out. Everybody will get their deer in the head on out. Uh, the rumor, I'll make that clear. The rumor I've heard is that the numbers are so high that DF, uh, DFW, Department of Fish and Wildlife, doesn't even come in there. Uh, people are hunting at night, drinking, and it's just not pretty. I haven't experienced that for myself. So I'm just going to say what I've heard. Um, again, epic spotting through here. So uh, let's see. We're going to search for... From that spot, though, you can also get to that's not it at all. Um, 
So now I've lost my place. Black Butte did not show up because there's a whole bunch of them. Um, there we go. I'm going to find it again right in through here. Bushy Mountains. So, oh, there's a cool spot. Matheson Group Campground. You can book this online. And I, oh, there it is. Okay. So you can book this online. Uh, I believe last I checked, it's like $70 a night for the entire group campground, vaulted toilets, and you get the whole thing to yourself. Now, uh, you couldn't throw a giant party because there's people camping right here. They're going to get pissed off, and sound does tend to carry through the woods fairly well. Uh, I haven't stayed here, but I am going to try and book this spot before I leave. I'm hoping in June because uh, I'm leaving at the beginning of July. I'm hoping to th not throw a party but have like a going away camping trip. I'd rather have a camping trip going away than a party here at my house. Um, I'm going to try and reserve this and invite just everybody. Um, this should be 22 and 11. Yes. Yes. Okay. So 22 and 11 comes in off FH7. And that's going to bring you to a couple of cool things. Let's see if we can find them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Colors. Okay, well, Black Butte is the. I have a video up of Black Butte. You can drive. I drove my Chevy, again, a 2500 diesel stock four wheel drive, the highway terrain tires. I drove it to some. I don't see the road on here, so it's hard to tell where I pulled in, but I drove it within a mile and a half of the top. Looks like it comes in through here. And we hiked the rest of the way up. Um, if you want to take your family or your girlfriend or your wife to an epic spot to just hang out and watch the sunset, mm, yeah, again, getting some that night. This is a beautiful view. Check out the video, Black Butte. It's up on my YouTube channel. Uh, again, if you guys like this or any of the other videos, please give me a thumbs up. Um, the more thumbs up that I get from – true thumbs up. Please don't do it just because. And watch the video – if you don't, uh, all the way through, please, because the, if the video is watched all the way through and I get a thumbs up, I turn, I get higher in the search rankings and then my videos get discovered and it's a lot, e uh, you know, more motivating, if you will, for me to put out these videos because they do, you know, they cost me fuel, they cost me time just to get there and film them, let alone come home and then make them. Let's see if we can find Keller Lake because it's also off of, there it is. So 22 and 11, like I said, from the main road, you can't see it, so it's a little bit difficult. Um, but there is a turn that if you're driving slow, you there it is, right here. See this little road going in right here? So just past the apex of this. So S turn, right in through here, come in through here, and you park like right in here, and then you hoof it the rest of the way. This looks to me like a view, I'd say, very late summer. See all this, like, out, the top of the water algae growth and plant growth? Mm. If you're in the area, go check it out. But, again, uh, late spring, this is beautiful. They have some really cool – I'm not sure what they're called. I think they're mountain trout. They're kind of like a dark color with red fins. There's not very many of them, and they're not very big. I really doubt you're allowed to fish them, but I don't know for sure. This is beautiful. We were seeing colors that were uh, light tans, dark greens, bright greens, epic. So you can get to both of those same day from that camping trip or from that campsite I just showed you. You could have lunch at Black Butte, come on over here to Keller Lake, hike around that, still have enough time to go back to camp, chill out for a bit, and then go get some water at the spring. And then head over to Pleasant Meadows for a sunset fish and be back at camp. You can do all that same day. No problem at all. Um, I haven't been further down 22 and 11 than Keller Lake, so I can't speak of that area. Um, but those are two things that, again, uh, I really like staying. Where were we just at? Um, if you look on the map, the map shows it as uh, Simpson Camp is the nearest landmark, which is private property. Um, where are we? I just studied some of this today, so I'm a little, a little rusty because normally I'm in a car and know exactly where they are. So, oh, here we go. Right here. Again, um, there's your coordinates. Epic spot. So you can stay here and get all that stuff, no problem. 
I used to winter season in pure winter, no matter where you go. Cali is a great winter. And two hours later, you're in the freezing and six feet of snow. <laughs> yeah, um, that is true. Um, if you're into that, though, not a big deal. Me, uh, I don't have uh, fancy tires, lockers, and whatnot, and I do tow a trailer because I am a glamper. Um, I bring at least a battery uh, and an inverter, if not a small generator. Um, I have a, tw as you see in my video, I have a Yeti cooler that I use for my dry goods, which is most people say is ridiculous because it's so well insulated. And I have a 12 volt refrigerator. When I leave camp, I leave my refrigerator plugged into my battery in camp. Um, I'm, I bought the 12 volt refrigerator. I'm never going back. Um, my, I never have to worry about running out of ice. I never have to worry about water getting in my food, um, and, and making it, uh, contaminated ick there's nothing worse than getting your butter out and it's dripping or your cheese Ugh. okay so epic areas the other one would be now dylan for you it's going to be a longer drive would be big dove it's going to be more west but it is a really killer spot to check out um now i'm going to head more west so i know i'm kind of getting away from where you're where you're at dylan but uh i'm going to keep going there's a fridge and a Yeti 400 battery pack with a thousand watt solar panel. Yeah. Um, I don't have the solar panel yet, but I plan to. Um, my truck has a seven pin connector in the bed. And from that, I was able to get a two port uh, cigarette lighter adapter. So I have a Minn Kota battery, battery box for like a trolling motor that has a cigarette port to charge it. I can plug that into my seven pin connector and during the day I can drive around and it charges that battery up for me. Uh, or the generator has a 12 volt output. Um, I do plan to get a uh, battery or a solar panel, but then I got to get a uh, solar charge controller also. Um, one of my absolute favorite spots though, let's see if we can find this. So this is FH7 landmark, this bridge right here. M1 Indian Dick. You're going to follow this up. Basically, when you go up, you're going to stay left. There's a lot of cool stuff up in here. I'll stop at one point here and I'll show you where I, the, the, I don't know what it's called, the, the banner picture uh, on my YouTube page. I shot right over here. We're going to keep going. Do, 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 do. Let's see if we can find it this way. This is probably really going to screw me, but here we go. Little Doe Camp. There it is. Let's make sure that's the right one, though. Where's the pond? Howard Creek. Where's the pond? Um, Little Doe Campground. Uh, I've not stayed there, but it's really pretty. Where's the pond? Is this a season? It's not a seasonal pond. Oh, here it is over here. So the road had washed out somewhere about here. It's done it a couple of times now where they, the whole thing is just, you, there's no, it, it, when I was there last year, it was six foot drop and 50 feet long. And <laughs> I don't know a vehicle that's making that, that I know of. Anyway, I hiked down somewhere in here. I hiked all the way down in here. That banner picture on my YouTube page is from standing, I think about here, facing this way. So looking what um, southwest, what you're seeing is this right here. That's my banner picture on my YouTube channel. Um, there are plenty of fish in here. I have not fished this, but that day I hiked all the way around this. I saw a lot of movement in the water, a whole lot. Um, I don't know if it's stocked. I don't know if it's bass. Um, I know that this do typically doesn't get a whole lot of snow up in here. It's not covered year round. It does melt off, um, but it does get some snow. Um, so there is fishing in here and you can hike it from, where is that campground? You can hike it from the campground to here. It's a bit of a walk, but you could totally do it. Um, now keep going. Oh, there's the campground. Let's keep going. Let's see if I can find this. So again, staying left. Staying left. Staying left. Alder Creek. We're looking for Rattlesnake Creek. 
There we go. Okay, so check this out. So uh, I have a video up. Um, <laughs> I'll look it up here in a bit. I have a video here from my older drone. Piece of shit. So there is, let me show you a landmark. There's a bridge right here, middle of fucking nowhere. Excuse my expression. Bridge, concrete bridge, like an overpass. This, you can drive down here and park. There is some really cool swimming holes over in here. This water go uh, end of July or no, let's say um, end of June through early August. The water level is still high enough to swim in. And even as a water Nancy, Lots of uh, snags in the lake, primarily bass. Thank you for sharing that, primarily bass. Okay. Wow. I'm not a huge uh, fan of eating bass, but they sure are a hell of a lot of fun to catch, especially when you get in a lake like that and you do topwater fishing with, like, uh, frogs. Oh, I love those topwater blows, blow ups. Ooh, they get the blood pumping. Okay. Right in through here. There's a little driveway. Comes in through here. There's right about here, there's a little hump, and it kind of blocks off your view from, or everybody's view from the road, so you they can't see into camp. They can see into camp right through here, and that's it. The neat part about this, there's not a whole lot of room. You might get three cars and four tents. There is a small uh, fire ring in there that tends to move around, but check this out. You can hike down to the river, and in through here is really pretty. There's some really epic swimming holes in here. But some of my favorite stuff. Now, this looks like it. I'm, I'm guessing here. This looks like winter time. This doesn't look like summer because in the summer, it's a lot narrower. What I like about some of this area is a lot of this is. Oh, okay, this is shadows. That's what's going on. The creek is narrow. Right along in through here, you're down inside a very deep valley, which you can see in my video. Uh, but what's fun about this is you can climb along these rocks. And if. You're not an avid rock climber like me who's not real good. It provides you a really cool challenge. But if you get into trouble, you push away and you fall in the water and you try it again. So for someone like me who's not real good, also I've had fingers put back on. So I can't, you know, I can't really do this to get into stuff. That's a fist for me. That doesn't work so good. Um, so this is a lot of fun. If you've got kids, <clears throat> they love this kind of stuff. The water is crystal clear never has any algae in it and it's uh very uh warm in the uh let's say i think i said june through beginning of august um i would definitely not let my kids go down here by themselves though ever um you keep going through down in here in through here and somewhere yeah okay so here's a really awesome swimming hole right in through here there's a bunch of them through here i could keep going and going, going but it gets better so because of this shadow i'm not going to be able to see if you keep going the only way I'm able to make it because of my inabilities is to hike the high route, cut down through here, and then back up through here. There's a waterfall here that's about, I think, 75 feet tall. You can hike up behind it on the right-hand side and literally get up behind it. It is cool. There's a little bench back in there, and the water is just dumping in front of you. And it's not like you're watching Bear Grylls where you're just getting pounded by water climbing up in there. No. It's not that bad. Even I can make it up in there. Um, but some of these stretches in through here, because I'm not a great rock climber with my, you know, I don't want to say disability, my inability, whatever. Um, I take the high road and then cut down. Um, but if you are good with uh, climbing rocks, you can just go straight down and then go around the side and then hike underneath that way. I've seen lots of people do it. No problem at all. Keep going. If you keep going, um, it's either in here or in here. There's some natural water slides that are carved out of the, the stone. It's very smooth. Now, it's not fiberglass where you're going to go 1,000 miles an hour. And they're not all that long, but they're natural water slides. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been to Slide Rock in Arizona. Something similar to that. It's not as long, but it's similar. And you're in the middle of nowhere. The other nice thing about this area, look, there's nowhere really else to camp around here. You see no other like offshoots fantastic place um so this is my favorite place to go period because no one else can really get around here and invade your privacy because again i'm the type that i'm going to be at least a mile away from anybody because when i play music i don't want to bother them when they play music i don't want them to bother me 
Um, so this is an epic spot right in through here. Uh, really pretty terrain. It's not going to be as nice as over towards the Pleasant Meadows area, um, that campground, but it is still epic. There are, if you search around, there are some other ponds that you can camp in up in this area near um, that do have fishing. Um, there's two or three of them. Granted, it's been so long since I've been up in there because for the several years that road, the M1 was washed out and you couldn't get in there. Um, I kind of forgot a lot of that information. Um, yeah. Uh, yes, I have actually seen one rattlesnake there. Uh, I, I don't know why it's called Rattlesnake Creek other than, I don't know. Uh, and there are, actually, if you were watching earlier in the video, there was a Rattlesnake Creek over by the M6. <laughs> so there's several Rattlesnake Creeks. Um, I've seen one, and I've probably camped there seven or eight times in the past 25 or 30 years because I've been with my wife for almost 20. And I've been camping since before her. So, yeah, probably 20 years I've been going to that spot still, hands down. Uh, one of my favorites um but with that said um i'm a bigger fan of the pleskett meadows area now i like the how lush it is i like how many end roads there are how many offshoots there are i like how the the climate is a lot more uh, neutral and cool um again though if you're coming from vacaville that's a bit of a drive yeah looks like a bit of a drive although i mean looks like you could take the five for part of the way so um and the five I mean, i've gone 80 on the five without any issue at all whereas the 101 i don't want to go 80 miles an hour um let's see here i assume this is all also off limits during the winter time right um not off limits is in like legally off limits uh, off limits is in the capability of your vehicle and how good you are at getting around in the snow. Um, I've been at that spot by Rattlesnake Creek in the middle of in the middle of winter and there was no snow. Um, I've been there before. I was there last year and wasn't able to get in there. Um, shoot, when was that? Uh, I don't remember when it was, but yeah, there was a time last last winter I wasn't able to get in there at all. Um, so it depends year by year. Um, that area of Little Doe Campground and the M1 getting in through Indian Dick um, is lower in elevation than a lot of places. So when it gets snow, it does tend to melt pretty quickly. Um, do note that the first 15, I think it's 20 miles, is pretty much private property. Um, you'll see it's pretty obvious. You see trailers and houses and paved driveways, and it's paved. And it's pretty obvious. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's year by year. Um, but it's not because of the uh, regulations. Um, let's see. Find a bunch of spots for a lot of research in warmer months. Winter is hit or miss. Yes, winter is definitely hit or miss. Summertime, though, like uh, I just did a video of uh, Sugar Springs. Oh, my God. Two campsites in a campground with a vaulted toilet. With an epic view, that's perfect. Because uh, even if you if you pull in and someone else stays there, it's not going to be that many people because there's only one campground and there's limits to these things. Um, but again, if you don't like it, you can go camp down the road. Now, dispersed camping, there is a limit to how close you can camp, disperse camp to a campground. And I believe it's a mile and a half. It's on the website uh, if you search for dispersed camping. Um, they don't want you camping right outside the campground. They want you a certain distance away. But in reality, you could stay that, that you know mile and a half or whatever it is, and then use the vault of toilet during the day because you know it's it's nice and all to you know be away from everybody. But sometimes it's nice to have something to sit on versus squatting over a hole. Um, with that said, I I, I typically bring a uh, post hole digger because I have a whole trailer and a truck. I'll bring a post hole digger and I'll dig one really deep hole. And then when I'm done, each time I kick a little bit of dirt. And then when I'm done, I kick a little bit of dirt. And when I'm done, I fill it all the way in. So that's how I get that done. Hey, thanks for joining. I appreciate uh, you stopping by. I hope you gave me a thumbs up. Um, capability, yes. Uh, capability depends on you. Uh, I am the. Uh, I have the mindset at 60% driver and 40% vehicle. I've seen people get some really, like, Unequip or in a, uh, unequipped vehicles into some nasty places and i've seen some people in some really built vehicles not make it in at all so it depends on the person um 
So, uh, Dylan, if you're coming from uh, Vacaville, if you want to start off with something easy, you could do Indian Valley Reservoir. But, again, it's all – even when it was lush, it wasn't that lush. Uh, a lot of manzanita, which is not going to grow that tall. Uh, the pine trees are very sparse. I mean, here we can zoom in here. This is all pre-burn. But look, a little group of trees, all manzanita. Group of trees, all manzanita. Keep going, same thing, all manzanita. Now, the spot I showed you over here, excuse me, that we were going into, it is kind of nice because there are some trees you can camp under. You, you stay up in, in under here, you get shade all year round, or I mean, uh, uh, all day long. Um, but again, it's, I don't go here for the beauty. There is a lot of junk out in here from people shooting. Um, excuse me, need just something to drink. Um, so it all depends on where you want to go. Um, but I like this spot because you don't get bothered by anybody because no one knows to go, okay, here's camp. Who's going to think to go all the way over here to get into here? No one does. We found it by accident by going on dirt bikes. Go, oh, check that out. Let's do this water crossing. Oh, hey, check it out. The road goes this way. That's how we found it. There's a video of my son shooting. Uh, we were right about here shooting into the hillside this way. And I do have a video of flying back and forth when it still looked like this. But as you can see, it's the trees are pretty sparse. They're not all that pretty. So if you wanted to try out some California camping, this would be it and pretty close to you. Um, and again, you can come in. You don't have to come in through uh, Nice. You can come in through Walker Ridge Road here to the Highway 20 right here. Walker Ridge Road. Um, it's a bit of a drive. But you can disperse camp once you get in here. There's plenty of it. And as you can see, there's plenty of little offshoots. Granted, a lot of this is burned also. Um, I'm not sure where the fire line was. If I had to guess, it's basically right around in here north. All this is all burned or has fire breaks and little patches that didn't burn. There's a cell tower and um, ham repeater. That's been, is that it here? No, that's been saved. Um, they did a fire break around that and uh, it didn't burn at all. So that's a great spot, Dylan. I also would highly recommend the next closest place would be Lake Pillsbury. Um, take the M1 or the M6. Do not stay down here in the basin any time of the year also it's paid camping and they have uh, campground hosts which means that there's they're supervised um so i don't know how people get away with driving around drunk and whatnot but i won't ever stay down here in oak flat or any of those uh, oak flat i've never seen navy camp open to be honest i every time i'm there the gate's shut um i won't ever stay here um this is a cool little stretch i've let my son drive through here he's 12 he thought that was a blast because no one can really see you there's some really sick puddles in here during the winter time. If you want to blast some big puddles, there's a whole bunch right in through here. Epic fucking puddles. Um, take the M1, Dylan, and go up, go up, go up, go up. And like I said, right here at this little bend is where the M1 and the M6 change. And right here is where the game refuge starts. So don't bring any firearms. And then all the way up to somewhere... In through here, this is all game refuge. Just no firearms. The M1, that's your border. So you're clear here and on the M1, but all of this game refuge. Um, if you want, again, if you want privacy, uh, this is perfect. Follow the M6. Um, let's see, somewhere in here. Let's see if we can find Trout Creek. See, Rattlesnake Creek. There's one right there. Uh, da, 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 da. Where does the M6 go? I'm trying to find that spot where I filmed that video. Oh, I think we found it. Du, 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 du. It's going to be right in here somewhere. That video I filmed is right in through here somewhere, right on the Eel River. Start to branch away. Not so good. Trout Creek. Here you go. So, see this culvert right here? There's a little turnout down into here. It goes down. I backed my trailer into here. Trout Creek is really cool. And then you got the Eel River right here. So you got two creeks to camp in. During the winter, it's going to be kind of loud. I found we, my wife and I thought, well, I don't know if we'd stay here. Uh, it was really, really loud. 
Pillsbury for a beginner in the area. Um, yeah, don't stay in Oak Flat. Go, just go up the hill again with uh, Oak, uh, the M1 and the M6. You can disperse camp all the way along it. There are several uh, spots that if you're driving slow, um, there's one that uh, I stayed in that I didn't even notice. I was driving along. It looked like it was an area people were spinning donuts in. And I was looking there, and as I was driving along, I happened to look back. There was a road that went back up in there. And there's a really small spot. It was really private. My son and I stayed there. And it was cool because no one saw it, and they all just kept going. Um, thing is, along the M1, it's one of the few places that's open currently to go uh, OH, do OHV. So there's a lot of dirt bikes. Um, they're all respectful. They're all polite, but it's a pretty busy, like, thoroughfare. M6, epic. Um, so here's the spot when you when you see the video of me swimming with that, or there's that newt in the beginning, and you see me swimming. That's right in through in through here and in this area right here. Um, the uh, Also, this is the edge of the uh, game preserve right here, this trout creek. Out of the game preserve, game preserve. Um, I did one a video of uh, like flying through the trees at Eel River. That I was flying right right in through here. This is where that is. But let's see if we can find that spot because it's really close. Where you messaged me about uh, Dylan about camping. Let's see if I can find it. it. Should be right along here. It was long straight away. I think this is it. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so it's hard to see heading down or north in the M6. See this little road right here? And then you see me uh, when I'm kneeling down and saying, oh, you're here. That's right about, no, it's right here. And then you can back up into here and you can camp under these trees right here. Uh, it's not too big. You can fit a couple of tents, uh, several trucks. Um, you can also park in through here. This is exactly where I'll click it and see if it shows you the coordinates. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, I gotta get rid of this. Go away. And then, how do I get coordinates? Good with maps, but not this map. Glad you guys are patient with me. <laughs> Trying my best. Use summer and winter times. Uh, what do you mean by lost? So most places around Pillsbury is accessible uh, around now. Yeah, so Pillsbury, like I said, you can uh, Pillsbury itself very rarely gets snow, and if it does, it melts really, really quick. Um, the nice part about heading up the M6 uh, along to the M1, um, you just go up the hill, and uh, like I was saying, a friend of mine was there uh, two or three weeks ago. He made it almost to the top of Whole Mountain, and there's some uh, really cool dispersed camping you can do year-round right there on Whole Mountain. Or on the M1 up to Whole Mountain, Dylan. Totally, you can get away with that year round, no problem. Um, this spot right here, I have made. I made it here uh, end of December. I made it to this spot right here without any issue in my Subaru. Um, and this is where I, you know, I'm kneeling on the ground and saying, "Oh, it's not you're here." And this is the Eel River. Um, and here's the turnoff. Uh, but this spot I was just at, I was telling you about Trout Creek. That's where uh, my son and I turned around. Um, that's the culvert I was talking about where I was alone and I was worried about falling off each side mm -hmm. right here. So I parked right here and this is where I turned around because this is where it started to get pretty snowy right in through here. And that was December. Um, and now we haven't had much rain for the last few weeks, so it's probably open right now. Um, but again, it's dispersed camping. If you find a spot that's established, you can stay in it. Um, you couldn't just like drive up this hillside and stay right here. But you see this little driveway? You can stay down in here, no problem. Completely legal. One spot by the creek. I was there for the down the river. Did you hike it under body rocks and epic swimming. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, hey, Anthony, how's it going? Um, please, uh, all of you, uh, if, please chime in on the comments because uh, we're all here to help each other out. This is a huge, Mendocino National Forest is huge. Um, does it show up if I do this? Yeah, massive. See all this? Mendocino National Forest. It is huge. Huge. Now, when I was talking about the M1 and going north up into Indian Dick, if you keep going, it hits another wilderness area called the Yalabali Wilderness. Um, where the road dead ends into the wilderness area, there's a huge turnabout where you can park cars. 
And off to the left is a really cool little spot to camp that's really private. You've got a little tiny seasonal pond, but you're so far up in there, very few people come by. Again, there's several ponds up in here that you can fish. Um, lots to explore. All of this is available for dispersed camping with the limitation of you cannot stay. I, again, I think it's within a mile and a half of a campground. You can stay in all of this. Um, and all of this information is available on the Mendocino National Forest website. Uh, I found it easier to navigate their website by going to the site map. But yeah, um, if you want to take the family and you, uh, you don't need the guns, I would head on the M6 up into the game preserve. Stay right there on the Eel River. Mm. Let's see, though, by happenstance, since you guys are still watching... Uh, do, 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 do. Where is Lake Pills Pillsbury? Let's go back to map view. M6, M1. Okay, back to satellite. Da, 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 da. There's the turnoff. We're gonna follow it down in here. Go back. Follows the river. Okay, when it gets so along this stretch right here where it gets close and parallels the river, Dylan, that would be your uh, frame of reference. Okay, there's a spot going to be right in through here because as you can see, it does it bear it veers off and away everywhere else. Um, let's see if we can find that other swimming hole I was talking about. So Trout Creek, keep going. There's another culvert. Is that? Yep, here it is. Okay, so see this no, another culvert, but this one's much much larger. This pipe is bigger. The bridge, if you will, the passing, the overcrossing is bigger. There's also this parking area right here. You take this little trail down through here. This swimming hole is huge, Re nice and deep, really wide, very few people. Now, obviously, you can see some people do come in here. Uh, but like I said, when I stayed there back in August, I think I saw one, maybe two cars. So the chances of somebody else coming along, pretty slim. Epic swimming right here. Uh, I wish I could get it to do a pin. There we go. So there's your coordinates. I'll let it sit there for a second so you guys can write it down. Um, Dylan, or all of you, my name that is listed on here is my name, is my real name. Find me on Facebook. Hi, Val. Thanks for tuning into my channel. Uh, I'm super glad everybody's here. Um, this spot's epic. If you find me on Facebook, because I when I go, I generally say, hey, I'm going to be going in a few days. I'm going here. Or, hey, I want to go. Anybody want to join me? Uh, and I am always open to meeting new people uh, and being a tour guide, if you will. Um, I have no problem going and saying, you know, okay, well, spending the day with you and kind of feel each other out and see if we get along real well. If we do, we can stay together. If not, hey, I'll take you to a spot you can stay at. I'll go stay at another spot. I have no problem with that. So find me on Facebook. And uh, if you want to join me, great. This coming weekend, I can't do. I just made a commitment today. But maybe two to three weeks, if you want someone to drive along with you, um, even if I can't stay up there, I am pretty easily convinced to go do a day trip and show you how to get up there. Um and show you around and show you some of the cool spots because there's a really epic spot that the last few times I've been up on whole mountain, there's been no one there and no evidence of anybody staying there for quite a while. Um, it's, I couldn't find it on here though. So again, I hope you guys wrote down these coordinates because that swimming hole is fantastic. Absolutely beautiful and fantastic. And these roads, if you're really adventurous, you can take this road. I, we're not gonna be able to see it on here. But you can take it up here, and then where it connects in through here, you can take this road, and then there's a really nasty – we did it in a Tacoma with lockers. We made it all the way back over here to the M1. We made a huge loop, and we did it in no problem. I think it was four hours to do the loop. We started over – actually, I don't remember where we started. If I had to say we started on the M6 and went up along the M6 and cut up over and through here and then cut back over to the M1 – the last stretch was pretty brutal. It was uh, pretty steep. And this is where I have to say, excuse me for a moment. Okay, sorry. Family matters. 
Um, at any rate, uh, we did it in a Tacoma with lockers. Uh, made, he made it with no problem whatsoever. I wouldn't take my diesel on that, but it was a fun route to do. And if you got a Jeep, Dylan, not a bad way to go. Oh, there we go. Friend request. I'll get to that as soon as we're done. Um, Again, if you guys have any questions, you can post them on my videos and ask, where is this spot? I'll do my best to give you the coordinates that aren't posted because a lot of them are posted, but not every single one. Um, or follow me on Facebook. And if I'm going up, come with me. Uh, if you want to go camping, shoot me a message. And if I'm available, like I said, I'll go up for just a day. Uh, for me to go for just a day to Whole Mountain, like I said, I'm so Whole Mountain's over here. I'm right here. I've actually made it to Lake Pillsbury in my car in an hour and a half. Granted, I got lucky in the road right through here was had just been graded. And I wasn't going anywhere near the speed limit. But I made it to Pillsbury in an hour and a half. So from there, it's roughly, I want to say, 45 minutes to about here where there's some epic camping right in through here. So for me, that's what, two hours, 15 minutes, two and a half hours. Uh, granted, if I'm towing the, taking the truck and towing the trailer, I'm looking at three and a half hours. The trailer tends to bounce quite a bit because I have uh, my I, a foam bed in there. I have a generator, a battery, a huge tote full of dishes. I carry a, uh, a couple of big aluminum pots to boil or not boil, but heat water in. I have a battery operated pump with for a shower, shower tent. Um, I bring lights. I bring a, a small job site radio for music. Uh, my stove is on uh, four legs and has 30,000 BTUs per burner. I can boil water really, really quick. Um, if there were crab up there, we'd be set. Um, I don't know if I can find this spot, though. It's past that road there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, bear with me. I'm trying real quick. So it starts to get sparse, and that's one indicator that you're getting too high to f above it. Mm -mm -mm. I think that's it right there. So like I said, the M1 is going to go up, and then there'll be a left turn that almost doubles back. So right in through here. But you'd actually camp. camp campground is right in through here, and the fire pit is right in through here. So what we could do, uh, let's see here, go channel, let's see if I can show you that spot. I should be able to pull it up pretty quick, but it's going to be a while back. Um, so fishing Pleskett Meadows, that's going to talk about the bait that I use. Uh, here's the water video of the spring, uh, of uh, drinking spring water. Here's the second one. Uh, Dylan, this is the video I think you commented on. Uh, a video about the coolers I use. Um, the, do, do, do. This is sitting also in that same spot. This is also in that same spot, Dylan, where you commented on. Here's the video of Black Butte, uh, uh, Keller Lake. That's again, you can take, you can hit that one from um, from that camping site I was showing you. Another one of Pleskett Meadows. That was more of a drone video. Here's that game camera I was talking about, where the uh, the doe and the buck were playing from the camera. Here's the, you know, here's what this looks like now. Mute this. This is what it looks like after the fires. So the view between the two, drastically different. So Dylan, uh, I don't know that I'd take the wife and kids there if you want forested area. Um, this isn't it. During the warm ones, how are the fire restrictions? Um, fire restrictions, so... They'll tell they'll put it up on the Mendocino National Forest to make it very obvious. There are some campgrounds that you're allowed to have fires year round. Uh, yeah, okay, I'll pause this then. Yeah, it, it ain't pretty. Um, I think it was like 400 and something thousand acres. Here, check this out. Here, this gives you a real good perspective. We'll go to the end. Uh, the hill climb. This shows you kind of how much just just how much burned. Um, so this does a fast hill climb. Come on, do do do. Um, there we go. So this is climbing up the hill from Bartlett Springs Road that you saw at the base. Um, so while this is playing, you can play, uh, have fires at several campgrounds up near Plaskett Meadows. They allow them year-round. 
uh, when you're dispersed camping, there are limitations, but they make it very obvious on their website. It's up in the right-hand corner on the home page and every other page when the restrictions are in place. Check this out. All burnt, everything. See that? All burnt. Disgusting, but I mean, it is what it is, right? So Dylan, I wouldn't stay there if you're going for something pretty. Um, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm looking for, oh, here we go. So that Rattlesnake Creek spot, let's uh, summarize that spot up for you. Mm -mm -mm. This has a copyrighted song, so I can't play it. There's that campground I was talking about. There's my old piece of junk drone. Hey, there's my first drone, Val. <laughs> That's the one that got me hooked, the QX350. Um, let's see if I can show you some of the swimming holes, though. Check this out. You can hike then. This is what I was talking about as far as climbing on the rocks. But look at these. This is late in the season, so the water's not flowing so well, uh, and it's really warm, so the algae starts to grow. But if you go end of June, beginning of July, beginning uh, or through July, beginning of August, the water is flowing. It is very clear. Um, and these swimming holes, there's some of them. You can jump into them, and they're like 10 feet deep, and it's that polished stone on all the walls, and you can swim all the way through them. You keep going, and you hit the waterfall. I don't know if I have this in the video. So here's there's another view of the camp campsite. Oh, that's a little short. That's that's the rig I tow on a primary basis. Our dog, blah blah. Let's see if I can find the waterfall though. <laughs> Come on now. Me trying to learn how to fly. This is that bridge I was showing you in the video. So you can see it's pretty high up. Where is? Well, anyway, you're going to get the just have to go with. You can watch the video later. Um, but you can see the polished smooth stone is really easy to climb on. Uh, you can wear flip-flops, bare feet, and then you can rock climb. Like I said, I can't grip rocks, but I can climb on that stuff. And if I fall, I just pull into the water. Um, now, let's see. So here's what it used to look like. Let's see if I can. Somewhere in here, I just do a fly around. We'll skip the shooting part. At least I thought I did. Too many videos. Can't keep track. Uh, da, 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 we're running low on videos. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm looking for that campground, though. Where is that campground on a whole mountain? Further back. So here's some of those puddles I was talking about. Uh, shooting down in that uh, basin. Hitting more of those puddles. Where is that video of us in? Oh, here we go. No, don't add it to Q. Play it. Again, it's got a copyrighted song. I need to change that. Um, this is an epic spot to camp. Now, granted, this is somebody else flying, and it's not very cinematic. But look at this view. And this is probably three quarters of the way up the hill. Uh, that's the top of Whole Mountain up in here. Sorry, it's all over the place. We He was a beginner. That's all of us. Um, somewhere in here, we have some view of the actual campground, too, though. He flies through camp. And you can see these holes in their entirety on your own here. There's the title of the video. So here's looking down at camp. Okay, so let's go back one. Do, do, do. Where is it? So there's the turn right here. See how it doubles back? So this is the M1 heading up. It doubles back. And that's what you're going to look for to get into this campground. See how it comes back in through here? Now he flies through camp at some point here. There it is. There it is. Hit play. So there's camp. As you can see, there's plenty of room in this spot. Oh, we got tent, 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 truck, truck. No problem. There's a nice fire ring right in there. Lots of flat space. Um, and again, it's about two thirds of the way up. My Subaru's made it no problem. I've even seen a BMW make it into here. Uh, I saw a Crown Victoria cop car make it to the almost the top, the turn at the top of camp. 
I, I was shocked. But nice fire ring. Like I said, it's covered, so it's got plenty of shade. Great spot to camp. This is my favorite. If I was going to stay on Whole Mountain, this is the spot I seek out every single time right here. Um, the, again, so Dylan, this is where I would – if I was going to lead you anywhere, this is where I would lead you is into this spot right here. How do we get out of here? Um, and then I don't know what else that's all that exciting. Um, up in this area we were playing, but this is an entrance before Lake Pillsbury, another area. This is from the top of whole mountain. This guy was crazy. Do, 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 do. Hill climb, hill climb, hill climbs. Come on now. So top of whole mountain gets real steep, but this guy was death wish. <laughs> but the view from up here is just amazing. Let's see if it shows it any. This is the top of whole mountain. This used to be a fire lookout. So that gives you some perspective of how high it is. Fire lookouts. Look at my video of Anthony Peak. 6,985 feet or something. Epic view. Epic, epic, epic view. That's the landing strip. That's Lake Pillsbury down in here. So as you can see, you can epic views from up there. Your Jeep would totally make it. No problem. Uh, I've heard rumor this is available this weekend. Uh, or two weeks ago it was available. That's the rumor I heard. Find me on – you sent me a message on Facebook – I know who to ask who was there recently. I'll shoot them over a message and see what they have to say. I'll tag you in the comment. Um, I know I, I would say with a lot of certainty, you could make it to uh, – close player. You could make it to the spot I just showed you, the uh, this one, the large private camping from Whole Mountain. I'm pretty sure you could make it to there in a Jeep. No problem. Um so this one is past the top of whole mountain this area had burned a few years ago this is technically wilderness area right here right in here this is all wilderness sorry for the color grading is terrible this is back when i was still learning how to fly edit and so on and so forth um there's actually does it show it in here so if you happen to find this you're not going to get there this time of year but if you go right after uh in spring you'll find this little grassy knoll if you go out over here, there's a road that heads over into here and heads off up into the hills. You won't see a soul. <laughs> Three times I've stayed there. No one came through. And it's very wooded, uh, very private, and totally awesome. Um, you start to get past Whole Mountain, and you start seeing, you know, this would be uh, mid-spring, summer. Excuse me, really lush. And you can see the dog. I mean, how tall this stuff is. This burned many years ago, but didn't burn a huge area. And now it's starting to grow back, so it's kind of pretty. And you can see it didn't burn everything, though. So it's just kind of neat to go check it out. I don't know what else is in this video. I mean, I've got so many videos. I, I think I've got seven or eight terabytes of footage from all my camping trips. Um, so again, check out the videos if you have any questions. Um, this is, you know, staying. This is filmed from that same camping spot I just showed you, staying off the M1. Um, and you can see that, you know, that fog I was talking about. Granted, this is before I was Part 107 certified and uh, <laughs> knew you weren't supposed to do this. But look at that. This is just epic. And that's, uh, I think, 60 feet up from camp. Um, and from camp, you can start to see whole mountain up in there. But look at these views in the evening. Granted, the color correction is just terrible. But look at these clouds. There's That's not a time lapse. It's not sped up at all. Look at that. Now... I get in trouble for staying there from the wife because we've stayed there so many times. She wants us to broaden our horizons. I get it. But it's so easy to get there. You don't need any special rig to get there. The site is big. It's beautiful. That, that bluff you can sit on and just sip your tea and look out at Lake Pillsbury and end the day like this. Yes, please. Um, 
I'm not sure what else would be good for you to check out as far as video. This is uh, East Park Reservoir. It's a campground. Um, we stayed there, and the it was 107 every day. But the, I was catching largemouth bass 10 feet from my tent <laughs> all day long. It was epic. Um, these both are filmed closer to FH7, probably 20 miles uh in from fh7 both of these you know fall colors the whole mountain that's where those are filmed sunday drive um if you want to watch a lot of the drive up whole mountain both of these videos 27 minutes this one is a lot of a lot of the way up whole mountain if you want to check that out here's that big dove i was talking about earlier I, again i called it that because oh i didn't put it in the title there it is um because of the amount of birds that are in the area. Now, remember I was talking about the cool fire ring, the log to put your feet on, and the car bench? There you go. <laughs> Two tones are better than one. Um, look at those colors on that fire ring. Now, couldn't you just see kicking back right there with, you know, I'm not a huge drinker, but... You know, a cup of warm brandy. Oh, you know, I don't drink a lot, but that's me. So here's that little pond I was talking about that's right there. Let's see if we can find the view on the opposite. So camp is behind you, and look at this. And then this is before I knew that you were allowed to fly in the National Forest, so I wanted, a, you know, plausible deniability, so I stopped flying. But look at that view. Camp is probably 75 feet behind you. Let's see if we can find those tables and whatnot of the other site. Still learning how to fly and reveal stuff. And that looks like it's about the end. Well, the coordinates are in there, though. So that's the coordinates to get to. And I'll pull that back up so you can write those down. These are taken from my Subaru, though, not a Garmin. So I don't know how they translate across. Uh, which spot would be great to pull over at? And what are you, are you planning to overland a Jeep? Um, if you want an overlanding trip that's fun, would be uh, the first one I would highly recommend that's not a true overlanding. Go up through Lake Pillsbury, M1, all the way to FH7. And if you really want to go big, with the logs. More specific. Um more specifically, once you hit FH7, head east back to the five. I would probably take two or three days to do that trip, but you're going to cover a whole lot of ground and you're not going to see a lot of people. Um, and you can disperse camp the entire stretch through, except for within, a, I think it's uh, 13 miles, 14 miles from uh, on the M1 to uh, FH7. And then from FH7, uh, heading east on FH7, you it's 12 or 13. There's a big sign. It, it makes it clearly or very obvious. You can't camp anywhere in there, but everywhere the rest of the way, you can disperse camp the whole way. Um, so again, start at Lake Pillsbury, M6, M1, FH7, uh, and I think it's to Highway, what were we looking at? Highway 161 to 5. Uh, that would be a big trip, but epic. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty sick trip. Before I move, I plan to do FH7 all the way to the 5 and take several days to do it. Um, it is a bit of a drive for you being in um, in Vacaville um, would be to go that far to stay at the Pleskett Meadows area. But um, a fantastic, fantastic area. If you want to make the wife happy, that's where I would go because you could be here. Uh, I think in 30 minutes from camp, I'm allowed to play this song. Come on, where's the view? Doop -de -doop -de -doo, doop -de -doo. This view is just fantastic. Check this out. So you could be here in, let's say, 30 minutes from camp. I think... I get chills just looking at it from here. <laughs> and again, I was able to get my stock 2,500 uh, within a mile and a half of this peak. Not that long a drive. If you have a Jeep, 
you're probably going to be less than a mile from the top. That's Pleskett Meadows right there, that little pond. Um, so if you hold on, uh, let me show you one more and then I uh, let's see if we can find that because there was a crossroad, Dylan, uh, right near there. And let's see if we can find that and help you get a little closer. But let me show you one more thing. Do, 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 do. So Kelly Lake, that's a cool video, but um, Smith Camp area that would show you the drone footage of uh, Simpson Camp area I was talking about. Um, if you want to see that little campground, I was saying this is epic because spring water's right there. You could be 20 minutes from Black Butte, uh, 20 minutes from fishing. This is your best view. Smith Camp Aerial Tour will show you an overview of that one. Uh, FPV Tour is going to be from that Trout Creek right on the edge of the, excuse me, right on the, the edge of the game preserve. Um, these are both this We Need to Eat and Slow Life Down. These are both that Howard Lake by Little Doe Campground I showed you uh you already saw the sugar springs uh blah 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 mm -hmm. oh here it is anthony peak you could be here half an hour from uh check this out you could be here half an hour from that same camping site so from that campsite fishing water uh black butte keller lake anthony peak um and so much more from that campsite look they've actually got a vault toilet right there Somewhere in here, I'm higher up. There it is. Look at that. You can actually see, I think it's the Central Valley or the Sacramento Valley over in there. Let's see if we can pull that back up. Over in here. That's the Central Valley, I guess it's called. And you can see it from up here. And so I'll, right now, I'm at about 7,100 feet in elevation. Because um, this is just shy of... Uh, 7,000 feet. Um, you can go there and we happen to get there as the guy was leaving, but they will let you inside and give you a tour. They are very friendly. You show up during uh, the fire season, they're in there and show up during business hours, they'll let you in. Uh, anyway, let's go back to the map. Uh, okay, so back to the where I was recommending. Um, so I think this is it, and the nearest road was right here, 19N48. So it's over in here. Let's see. There's a couple of landmarks. That, I mean, when I'm out there, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm a quarter mile away. I've been on this road so many times. problem is they're under the tree canopy. Okay, so another hint I could give you would be that – when if you pass this camp oh yeah that's real close here's a turn off if you see this turn off you've gone too far but also right past camp which i'm guessing is right in here the road starts to get real gnarly uh big rocks um it shifts to having roots in the road the the topography of the road changes drastically really close to camp so if you start climbing and it starts to get really really bumpy you've gone too far turn around and remember on your way back down it'll be on your right uh, and it's almost du a double back. Um, you, If you're going too fast, you will pass it um, right in here. Uh, let's see if we can click and get the coordinates. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Come on. How do I? There you go. So that should be it right there. 39.500067 by negative 122.93590. Now I'm pretty confident that's it right there. Uh, what exactly can't you see? Um, oh, because the clarity on the map, try pulling it up by these coordinates. Um, I don't know if I can share. Will it let me put a pin there? Uh, is there a way to share this? No, that's going to X that out. Directions. For a problem, measure distance. Chime in if you know how to answer this question. Coordinates on the screen are too small. Okay. Um, 39.5. Zero, 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 
Niner 7, comma, negative, 1, 2, 2, decimal, Niner 3, 5, 7, Niner 5. You I again I've seen uh, Crown Victoria make it to near the top. Um, I, I I was shocked. It was a cop. <laughs> he made it all the way to here. This is the turn off to get back up the whole mountain, the very top top. During my video, you saw me flying. That was right here. He made it to here in a Crown Victoria. Again, that gets back to my point of it's uh oh, looks like you found it. Fantastic. Let me just pull that up in a second here. Um, he made it to there in a Crown Victoria. 60% driver, 40% vehicle. Um, when you go up, there's a couple of different routes. I always go this way. Uh, actually, I come up this way. This is the route I take. I have never done this route. I would, I've would i done it on a bike, on a motorcycle, but I've never done it on a car. And then there's enough room here to turn your car around. I've, I've made it and turn around in my Toyota with no problem. Um. That's where I'm at the map, right where you are. You don't see the car, no problem. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, let me pull this up and see. Well, that's the right location. Yeah, that's that's what it said on the map. Um, go back down. So here's a cool lookout right in here. This is really easy to find. The view is real epic from right there. Really windy, though. Would not camp there. Um Another spot, let's see here, is the hang glider spot. So right here, this is a very, very common location for hang gliders to take off is right in here. This is a, this building right here is subsurface. It actually goes underground. It's always full of water. I've never been able to get in there and it's full of rocks. Um, kids like to throw things at it though. Um, there's a hang glider spot right in, is that it or is it further down? The hang glider spot, they like to take off from there and they go all the way to the other side of Lake Pillsbury. Um, also, the other thing that's popular for up here is to get dropped off and ride a mountain bike all the way down. That's real common to see. And then dirt bikes, quads, and side-by-sides. Um, where was that turn off? Okay, so here's another indicator. I've stayed in this spot and through here. You can pull into these spots. Actually, that's not quite it. Where is it? Back up some more. There is a hill climb. Yeah, so you can do a hill climb that comes up through here. Nasty. I've seen guys do it in Jeeps and uh, Toyotas. Uh, and then you can do a hill climb up into here. And then you can camp in through here. Or keep going, camp in through here. This is a smaller spot. and I, I, You can be seen from the road pretty well. But there's a hill climb that keeps going and gets up into that other camp I was showing you. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Of course, I'm not finding it again. Where are you right now? Where's the site I'm following now? Um, I'm trying to find that campsite I just showed you the video of again. Um, not for any particular reason. <clears throat> I guess at this point I should move on to something else. But I'm not sure what else to move on to because these are my favorite spots. And spots I have videos up that you can actually see them. Um, it's below the hang glider spot. There's the turnout. Okay, so here's that turnout I was talking about. Um, and we're below that. Keep going. This would be the, okay, yeah. So here's the stretch that gets kind of nasty. And then here's camp right in through here. Like I said, there's a, if you pull up the map, you'll see this little bit of road. And camp is under these trees right here. And then the vista that you see us flying at right here. So when I was saying, oh, there's Lake Pillsbury, Lake Pillsbury. as you can see, is all the way down here. <laughs> so you're looking a pretty long distance away. Um, so here's that bluff. Um, I have seen, I have stayed here and had people come in this back way and then camp here. Um, and I have allowed them to. No, I'm not really allowed to, allowed to tell them to leave, but it's bad etiquette for them to come stay here when I'm right here, when you're in allowed to disperse camp anywhere. Um, but there is another firing over here. So in theory, you could have another family that you want to be with, but a near over in this spot here. 
Um, and it's walking distance. You could throw a stone between them. And then everybody could have, you know, watch the sunset right along this bluff. This is actually fairly steep right here. And there's an elderberry bush right here. Really? I had no idea. I did not know that about Homon. I know there's a uh, sign at the top that talks about the, the runway down there. Really? I did not know that. See? Uh, right on. I'm glad people are chiming in um, and bringing in information because even I'm learning stuff now. Um, I spend copious amounts of time just driving around and doing what I can to learn stuff. And again, I, whenever I run into a park ranger or, or a forest service prevention officer, I'm asking them everything I possibly can to gain as much information as I can. Um, but if you were going to go to whole mountain, this is the spot. If you want the wife and the, you want the kids to be able to have a good time and run around and be able to see them. This is all pretty flat from here all the way around and through here. This is all pretty flat. Uh, you're under the canopy, a thick canopy of trees, so it's shaded all day long. The wind is pr not too bad. This is a hillside right in here, but the wind typically comes up through and then covers through the trees and keeps on going, so you're well covered from the wind. Um, it's probably going to be your closest spot. If I had to give you, or if I was asked what's a compromise between driving, uh, being in the forest, uh, and people, this would be it right here, that spot right there. Um, most of the people you might once in a while find somebody on dirt bikes and to come through camp through here, but once they see you, they pretty much leave and they never come back. You'll hear the traffic from the road here, but there's a bluff right here. So they can't actually see you. The only place they can see you is right through here. And that's a very short stretch. Um, uh, so this is going to be your closest spot to you. That's not going to be as ugly as that burnt area. I showed you Dylan, um, Supposedly beat the bear. Oh, I have to allow this comment. <laughs> there we go. Um, one second. I'll get right back to that. I want to read that. Um, this would be the best compromise to keep the wife happy, the family happy. Um, another cool thing is between camp and the main road, on the west side of the road, there's a, there's a big pile of little sticks. That's an anthill, a really big anthill. It's probably four feet across and about a foot and a half tall. Really cool to show the kids. If you want to show the kids some neat stuff, that's something cool to see. Um, again, uh, I think this the board of the game refuge, though, is past here. Yeah, so I think you're safe to go in here with guns. But, again, anything on the east side of a whole mountain road, it's best to just stay away from with your firearms. Over here, you're good to go. Um, he supposedly beat the bear to death with his rifle butt before dying. Men were made differently. <laughs> yeah, dude, totally, wholeheartedly agree. Now, three hours, 45 minutes, that's about the same amount of time it would take me in my truck with my trailer because I can't drive fast with a trailer. So that's about the same amount of driving time for me. Worth it. Totally worth it. Um, so mark that spot on your uh, your list. The other one that I like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it because it's so small. Oh, yeah, there it is right here. Um, so you're driving up the M1. There's this like burnout area right in here, this big spot. This tree right here is full of mistletoe, full of mistletoe. So those would be two things to look for. A tree that's got no other trees right by it that's covered in mistletoe. And then this like mud, mud burnout area. There's a road that goes back up into here. And I have camped right here. It's not that great, but if the other spot's full, this is my, so this is my fallback right here. Um, this road dead ends. It's you can't really nobody's gonna come in that way and surprise you. It's pretty small, but you can totally fit your family back up in there. Um, no one from the main road can see you. Uh, this is a, a, a slope right here. Let's see if I can pull up the coordinates for this one. Okay. Um, keeping lost from the initial turnout. Uh, zoom in and out slightly. Let's see. So I can see better. Um, let's see here. I gotta show this. Lost initial turn on. If you can pull up this location, this is where I get lost. Um, one second, I'll pull that up. Um, so here's another location. This would be my fallback spot. And you said you couldn't read the coordinates, so I'll pull. The, I'll just dictate you those if you're ready. 
Uh, or actually, I can just type them in here, huh? Do, do we go 39.48261, comma, space, negative 122, decimal niner, 1788. There you go. So that would be my fallback location. Um, now let me pull up. Once you have Facebook, you can send me bullets, send me there too. I'm okay with anything. You're a big help, dude. I'm, that's yeah, absolutely. Welcome to California. I'm sad I'm leaving after I'm meeting all these people. Let's pull up this location here uh, that you posted, Dylan. Um, see, open a new tab, Control V. Let's see if that pulls it up. No. So can you put in the chat how I would pull up that location? Because I just typed it into the search. Oh, what if I go to Google Maps? There. Oh, oops. Uh, da, 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 here. And paste the coordinates in there. Can't find it. Okay, so I'm going to need your help. How do I enter that in? So when the coordinates pop up in the lower center, click on them, and they will pop up on the top left search bar. Copy and paste them from there. I just copy and paste them to Google Maps. I just tried that. Uh, here, let me recopy. Yeah, that lower spot's going to be less drive time. It's lower on the mountain. Uh, I would not stay higher up on the mountain. Uh, as you go up, that uh, you start to get into shrub oaks and manzanitas. Um, and a lot of um, cliff edges, windy and cold. Uh, I personally, well, let me think about this. Yeah, that spot I showed you is like the spot. I wouldn't stay anywhere higher up the mountain. Mm -mm. Uh, it's going to be cold and windy. Wouldn't like it. I'm going to copy it and try it one more time here. Do I have Google Maps? Hit X, V. I'm pasting it in there. Okay, now it's going somewhere. All right, hold on a second here. Let me pull it up. Yes. Yeah, okay. That location you just typed in to the chat, that is my backup location where if I had to send you, if I was with you and I couldn't stay uh, in that epic spot that I really, really like that's really big and awesome, this would be my backup. It's not as nearly as good, but it's my backup location. Um Again, though, you're in uh, the National Forest, and, and the Mendocino National Forest that allows this first camping. So anywhere is allowed. Just I'm saying I've stayed there, and it was good. It was pretty good. But the other one has a lot more area to it. I don't have any video from this spot at all, by the way. Um, the other spot up the mountain that I first showed you and gave you the coordinates for, that's the one to go to. Um, if you are really committed to finding a good location, uh, and you are really committed, I would probably head back down. It's not that far to go back down to the M6 and head into the game preserve and go to one of those two locations I showed you. Um, it might be an additional 45 minutes, and I don't know if that's a problem or not. Um, but these campsites are going to be a lot, or they're not really campsites, but campsites are a lot better down there. But if time is, is of an essence, check the first one I gave you the coordinates to, which you got. And then try the other one as a backup location. Um, got that one. So what's this one? Let me pull this up. Give me a second here. Where are we? Whoa, slow down. What is that? Uh, not sure what that is. Okay, let me zoom out a little bit. This ooh, is really sensitive. Oh, uh, are you saying that, like, area to stay in? You're going to see a lot of traffic. You're allowed to. Um, but you're going to be seen by everybody who drives by. Me, I mean, that's not the end of the world, but I don't like being seen by other people. I don't want them to see me. Um. 
you could stay there if that's what you're asking is could i stay here yes you could stay there i'm trying to find that in reference to everything else though oh that's near the top though oh no, no yeah that's the intersection to go to the very peak that's where you would double back to go to the top yeah so um let me pull that up on here so you just gave me the coordinates to this right in here uh, let me pull back the chat so you can tell me if you can see this uh i get lost from this here this here uh check out the game reserve yeah kyle uh i know your style of camping the game reserve or preserve or refuge i think it's refuge fantastic camping because you're not one of the type that carries firearms fantastic um a lot more wildlife because i know you're into photography mm. um but also i know you're into backpacking there is wilderness area past the top of whole mountain and i'm sure you're aware that uh, wilderness area is um can't bring cars so you know you're going to be totally alone um let's see here no when you were showing me the site to go to the first pick i get lost from where you said the trail was oh okay i got you i need to go south yes i can see your map okay if you can see my map right now so what you're seeing right now this is the intersection um again kyle thanks for tuning in don't forget to hit the thumbs up though please um what you're seeing right here is the intersection to head up to the peak the peak of whole mountain which is right here that video i showed you the top where there's just an epic view this is an epic view but it's going to be windy almost all day long um and you're going to have visitors the whole time uh if we have a it's been a while since we've had a storm so li the likelihood of getting there in a jeep pretty good um but i wouldn't uh, i've i met one couple that said they're going to stay the night there and i did my best to not scoff but i told them it's going to be miserable it's going to be super windy and super cold i wouldn't stay there um also this spot that you sent me the coordinates to this is really steep this is not flat at all um really steep uh i did see a bear right here once a black bear um if you want to camp past the top let's see if we can find that meadow i was saying this is a great spot and i showed you some flight with a dog running around it's right along the side of the road it's a little ways in though okay here we go so pulling up coordinates come on give me the coordinates come on okay it won't do it okay so that flight where you saw the dog running through the uh the plants and i said this is wilderness area this is wilderness area right in here now it's much bigger than my mouse is showing you much much bigger um see this road right here it's not labeled apparently it doubles back so you see this like uh grassy pond it's no water it doubles back heading southeast head back into here take this right hand or left hand turn and head into here there is some awesome camping head back in as deep as you're willing to grow look here's another little uh another area as far as i know that's not actually a campground i haven't seen like vaulted toilets or nothing but um all of this in here all the times i've stayed here very thickly forested never saw anybody never saw anybody um but i also when i'm camping i love to have something to look at this is all really flat uh you're all you're really gonna see is trees uh down trees and so if you're into that that's great um but uh you're not gonna make probably not gonna make it this time of year because of the elevation up in here um, and not many people go past the top, whereas a lot of people make it a goal to get to the top. So even if there is snow, you're likely to find it's been smooshed down and moved out of the way and shoveled and whatnot. So you're likely to make it. Um, but again, this is all wilderness area, Kyle. All of this. Hike it. Camp it. Um, you get really good cell reception right here, too, by the way. You go in through here, and there is a road. There is a road. You're not legally allowed to drive in here. But people do. You go over here, you have full bars of service. I have AT&T. I've made calls from there with no issue whatsoever. Um, so 
this area would be really good if you want lots of privacy but don't need a vista but again that spot that dylan i was showing you that's that's going to be epic um and i don't know we can probably find that again if you can make it to the top it's great to go visit but i don't stay there it's going to be super windy sorry i'm moving so quickly um so again here's your turn to get to the top um i have seen black bears up in here but i've only seen two in the entire 20 something years i've been going up in there and they they want nothing to do with you because everybody up in here carries firearms and i've never had an issue with that i'm i'm not scared of people with firearms um they don't bother me now where is that spot because okay so you dylan did you are you clear on the spot of where i was saying that like the cool spot kyle you've been there i think you were in the video i was just showing <laughs> did you see the video kyle um so here's the turnaround right in through here you see that and you've gone too far also remember the road starts to get nasty uh let's see where's that turn so here's the other road do, 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 do. here it is so you'll start to climb steeper and steeper and steeper and the road gets really nasty right in here you know you're starting to go too far you hit that turnabout you've gone too far yes that's the cool spot uh did kyle you've been with me several times that spot and yes you are the one who introduced me to elderberries and if i remember correctly that is right here that is an elderberry tree the first place i ever had elderberries was kyle showed me and introduced me to them and it's right here um again epic spot to watch the sunset right here there's a cool like if you go down the mountain you can come up through here and this is a hill climb that's not too burly but it's a lot of fun to go racing up it and kind of like press the wife and the kids and it takes you straight into camp um and yes here's that road that comes back again it's you could easily drive past it if you're not paying attention but if you're cruising along you know 20 miles an hour you're gonna see it and the only thing uh the only thing to note is when you pull in it's hard to see if there's anybody there so when i make this turn i always creep it along and go slow because when you first see you go in you cannot see if there's anybody staying in here or not um but it is a great spot absolutely this would be my goal dylan if you had to yeah uh pull up the gps coordinates pulling it up let me see what i can do come on there we go okay so type them in uh three niner dot four niner niner eight niner four comma negative one two two decimal niner niner oops nine three five niner oh one there you go that would be my goal of a compromise oh, i didn't even realize the camera's not really facing me sorry about that guys um that would be my goal of a spot that again is a compromise for you of distance forested uh not too densely visited uh likely to get that spot and highly likely to get there this time of year um again every year is different but you're highly likely to make that spot in fact let's try something right now kyle let's text curtis uh, da, 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 da. So, Dylan, give me a moment. I'm going to text somebody who I believe was there recently. How long has it been since you went up the whole mountain? Question mark. Did you make it to the top? Question mark. There we go. Let's see if he replies. Um. So, oh, you lucky bum. I don't have work tomorrow either, Kyle, but I've been on a hiatus kind of. Oops, it's still doing speech to type. Hold on. Um, I've been focusing so much on that video shoot for the shooting range last week and then this week editing footage that I'm uh, stretched my finances pretty thin right now. So um, as much as I'd love to go, Kyle Dylan on here was just talking about possibly going this weekend. Um, again, Dylan, if you can push it out a week or two, I can probably join you 
if not for a day, maybe for the weekend. Um, can't guarantee that, but I would pretty be pretty certain I could at least do a uh, day trip to guide you to that spot. Um, I could always drive my car, which is not that expensive. Um, maybe I'll, I'll hit the friend request and accept you. Um, and if I can make it this weekend, uh, I'll do my best. Um, so does anybody have any other questions here? Oh, you're patient. Well, yeah. So Kyle, uh, the other thing I was saying is that, uh, I'm sure you're aware I'm moving at the beginning of July. Um, we're going, I'm going to be trying to host a camp, uh, a big camp event at, um, should I forget the name of it? Across from Pleskett Meadows, there's a group campground that's really inexpensive. There's hiking nearby. There's fishing nearby, spring water, epic vistas, all right there. Um, and we're going to uh, try and set that up to uh, <clears throat> as a, a last hurrah in California. Um, so be cool with it. I'd be cool with anything. I have a wife, and three kids, and a dog. I have a dog, a wife, and one kid. He is 12 years old. Dylan, how old is your kid? He, mine is 12-year-old son. Um, and do you guys uh, into OHV shooting? Um, are you minimalist or glampers? Um, Kyle, I'm trying to try and pull up the spot. I was just saying I'm going to try and go to for our last hurrah. Uh, let's take grass down in here. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. Plus good. Um, Matherson Campground, Kyle. Um, you can book it online, and it's a group site. And I was told it's seventy dollars a night for the entire spot. Eight, seven, and three. And I also. Hey, if you can bring kids, it makes things a hell of a lot easier for me because I can bring my kid, and then if I can bring my wife, um, uh, it's going to be a lot easier for me to sell it. At, you know, like, hey, we're low on funds, but I want to go camping. If I bring them along, it's not an issue. Uh, and we do have a dog. She's fairly friendly. Um, I'm not sure what kind of dog. You can see her in some of my videos, though. Um, I'm military, so I'm into everything. I don't have any guns anymore since moving here. Are you okay with firearms being in camp? Okay, Curtis just replied. Been a few weeks. I got to our old camp, but was pretty slick from mud. Not much snow on the ground. Okay, so he's saying that the road had more mud than snow. Thank you. I'm going to reply, thank you. Been a few weeks. Um in the past few weeks, we haven't had a whole lot of storms, so the chances of making it up there are pretty good, actually. Um, the mud isn't so much an issue. Um, and I, just to be clear, I'm not the type to bring a ton of guns. We actually only own two 22s, uh, a Ruger 9mm, and a shotgun, so I'm not huge on shooting, but it's nice to pop a few caps, if you will. Really? Oh, okay. Uh, I'm, uh, so, uh, Daniel, I'm between pick and pull and town green on old Redwood highway. Um, sh hit me up on Facebook and we can make that happen. Not a problem. Um, and who knows, uh, we get enough people watching, uh, again, please, if you like this, hit the thumbs up, leave a comment. It gets my search standing, uh, higher, uh, and it makes it more, uh, I, at some point I'll get compensated. Um, but it might be kind of cool to do a caravan, if you will, a day trip of a whole bunch of people. West side as well. All right. So here, yeah, I don't know where that street is. I'd have to look it up. But uh, I'm right next to Rio Russo. Literally, like, it's almost my backyard. All right. So it sounds like we might... Might have something going. Kyle might be down to go. Daniel's down to go. <clears throat> Dylan's down to go. Excuse me, getting thirsty. Um, at any rate, those are my favorite places to go. Um, Dylan, the, the one up by Rattlesnake Creek is mm, epic. Problem is, a lot of other people know it's there. Um, oh, you got a four-way far van? Ooh, jealous. Um, Epic spot, but for you, that's going to be quite a trek. Um, really good. But again, let's switch back to map view. Look at how much area you can disperse camp in. And uh, let's see if we can pull up your area of 
Vacaville, there it is. So if you're looking at three hours 45 to here, I mean, look at all this. So one of the areas I, I want to explore pretty soon is uh, Snow Mountain, which is on the south end of uh, Mendocino National Forest. Uh, I haven't explored that at all yet. Snow Mountain was still covered in snow, but hole was pretty clear. Did you make it to the top? Rop. <laughs> um, or could you? If you tried. Um, trips. Uh, yeah, I don't mind if I do multi-day trips. If I just take off Friday, the kids and get off to school 2.30 and start up there, I get there at dark. Hit me up on Facebook. Um, yeah, I'll hit you up, Daniel. Um, um, so, hypothetically, uh, if you do an old-fashioned, I, I always show up with truck and trailer, and I have pretty much everything from hot showers to power, uh, radio, stove, uh, a tote full of dishes. Um, I could live for quite a while with no issue at all. Uh, carry a chainsaw so I don't have to carry firewood. Um, camping is, is pretty comfortable, never an issue. I even have um, uh, Mr. Buddy Heater, so if things get really cold, we can go pack into the trailer and uh, hang out and sip some tea and warm up by the Mr. Buddy Heater. We even got a smoke detector inside there. Um, there's a lot of cool areas. So again, Dylan, the other area you could research that I don't have much experience with is the uh, Snow Mountain Wilderness Area. There's plenty of area that's not wilderness that you could drive into that's going to be on the southern end of the uh, forest, even more accessible to you, that you can access a lot of it from uh, Clear Lake area. So you look at all these different roads. There's, excuse me, plenty of different roads. Here's Bartlett Springs Road. We were talking about that earlier. It comes in through here. Uh, it heads over to Indian Valley. Again, this is BLM land. All in through here. Um, if you can get it online... I highly encourage you, FAA map, where'd it go? Oh, too many maps. FAA, plenty of OHV maps. This map shows you private lands, doesn't tell you the names, private lands, uh, BLM, national forests, state parks, uh, national parks, it's all in here. Um, and I think it was 12 to 15 bucks. It's again, the water resistant uh, paper. Um, and again, this never runs out of batteries and you can get people to circle things on your map. Hypothetically, if you have one, when, um, uh, we meet up, you can copy some of my circled areas because I got quite a few, uh, and check those out. Uh, I was going to get that earlier. Yeah. So, uh, at this point I need to get off cause I'm getting texts from, well, actually let's check this one and see if that's from uh, my friend about the top. I didn't try. I stopped at camp and came back down. Okay, so he didn't try to make it to the top. Uh, Snow Mountain was still covered. So Snow Mountain is a pretty good distance away. And also when you're looking at it from Hole Mountain, um, you're looking at the north face, which doesn't get a lot of snow or a lot of sun. So it's going to stay covered in snow for a lot longer. Oh, man, the general store said it was impassable. I'm not sure if I believe him. So... The apparently stopped the old general store at the bottom. Um, there is a general store. I'll show you, Dylan. Let's see if we can pull that up. Um, Trout Creek is past that. Where they meet up. So anyway, on the way into Lake Pillsbury from our end on the M6, um, whereas you'd probably come in on the M1, um, there's a general store. My friend staying the guy, the, the old man at the general store said it wasn't passable, but not sure if I believe him. I would believe this comment here that it might be passable because we haven't had any, we've had warm temperatures and we haven't had a whole lot of snow, uh, rain in a while. We probably make it, but he made it to our that spot I was just showing, telling you about with just some mud. Um, if you've got a Jeep, 
you're going to be good. Kyle, cheers. Um, hit the like button, though. Um, you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. Okay, so I'm going to tune out, too. I'm going to find you guys on uh, Facebook, and we'll see what we can come up with. Stay tuned. Uh, please thumbs up if you like it, and uh, cheers, all.